I'm trying not to run over teenagers. You're in a car? Well, yes, I had to pick up my daughter. Oh. So I'm trying not to run over teenagers. That makes sense. What doesn't make sense is why they just cross the street without looking. Like, who, who does that? Why? Or Kids that? typically yeah, do. Yeah, or they're walking in the middle of the street for no fucking reason. Don't be swearing on live stream. Oh, is it streaming? I didn't mm -hmm. know why. My yeah, apologies, audio. Thank you. Let me get to the stop sign and I will post it. Yes. Let's take a look at We're checking out the video suggestions portion to answer some questions. Vibe typing, you know. Oh, goodness, it got dark. I had announcement of that. Okay. Um, Abby said she will be in and out, but she will be there to help moderate. All right, great. I mean, how bad is the chat that it needs moderation normally? Not really terrible. I mean, there's been a few times that I've had to mention to people to keep it PG. Keep it PG. Let's see what we got here. It'd be really cool to see who the golden pairs, I spelled pairs wrong, in your eyes. So my personal opinion, oof, I don't often deal with that. Let's see how many people are watching. Um, by the way, you can open a new tab and click your stream, and you should be able to see who all is um, in the chat. Click my stream? What are you talking about? Like the link. No. Open it in a new tab. It should show it. Nah, I'm not too worried about it. Let's see. We've got at least three people said something in the chat. So there's at least three people. Hi, people. Hello. Let's see here. Let's see what we got. It might not be fun, but it can sure be helpful. Maybe a video about MBTI types at a workplace. Yes, that was that was the one we could talk about. Certain types in the workplace. You know, which, by the way, uh, if anyone's interested, I, of course, have made videos specifically on, on certain uh, cognitive functions in the workplace. 
uh, specifically the perceiving ones. But those are Patreon videos. Let's see what we got here. I uh, when it when it comes to people in the workplace, generally speaking, uh, you, you can go by certain cognitive function preferences. Not you don't necessarily need to go by specific types. If we're talking about like a generalized behavior in the workplace. Usually. But before we get into the meat and potatoes, I would rather wait until enough people decided to show up before I started talking about it. I guess that doesn't really matter. Maybe not. So uh, let's see. We can wait. We can ask the wonderful people that are in the chat. How is y'all's day going? Yeah. Oh, goodness. Knock out some small thoughts. Yo, yo. How's it going? Uh, by the way, I'm I'm currently running Neverwinter Nights in the background. This is a it's a very, very old game. Dungeons and Dragons third edition. Which of course no one's uh I sincerely doubt anyone in the chat is familiar with it. Let's see. How is everyone doing today? Let's see who we've got. Anyone I recognize just want to sleep? I know who that is. How do I... How do I pronounce... Ya... Yakimoni? Yeah. Yakimone. And then Rachel. Uh, Narcissus 4. I think that's Nini. Or something from the Discord, right? It's about right. Uh, Joseph E. I don't know if you're in my Discord or not, but welcome. Pen Cap. Nice to have you here. How oh, life is terrible. Immortal Emperor Master. <laughs> Yeah, it's Neverwinter Nights. Uh, enhanced Edition, of course. It's, um... Uh, not great. Work when you are streaming, but I got three more hours till work. Well, perfect, then. You'll be here for most of the stream today, then. Today, we are just kind of going through the... Uh, through my Discord section for video suggestions and, you know, to kind of go over them to see if they're interesting to talk about. I think, I I'm not certain, but I think the Immortal Emperor was commenting on my pronunciation of Yaki Moni or something. I'm not sure how to pronounce that at all. Yes. Well, you know, I did a poll for when I should do my live stream, and Friday came up, so I was like, okay, well, maybe a little bit later in the day I'll do it on Friday. And I'll probably still do it on Sunday. I may just turn into a weekend so, thing. Yeah, like, it's more so to test to see when we have higher activity. Um, yeah. We did a poll on Discord and then in the YouTube. Uh, Discord, that Sunday... Um, ironically, Sunday got the least amount on the yeah. YouTube one. <laughs> Just, people are busy. So, you know, it's, it's the day of rest. And people don't have time to listen to me on a Sunday. There are traps everywhere in this place. Terrible. I guess I mean, of course, obviously, we're going to go ahead and answer questions that you guys have. Yeah. Well, I say we. It'll be urgent. Well, let's uh, let's first talk about some 
MBTI types in the workplace, and I think it's best to start off with types that we're going to be more familiar with, which are going to be introverted sensors, obviously. They make up... Uh, I, so, the last time... I, I, it was it was on the MBTI website where they had their own official you know, census data. And... Now, granted, I don't trust it completely, but most certainly I agreed with their assessment that at, around half the population was a preferenced introverted sensor. So that's introverted sensing in the first or second position. So most people are familiar with introverted sensors and how they behave in the workplace. Now, there's definitely, you know, so there's the four types that have that strong preference when it comes to but there is a difference between the extroverted thinking introverted sensors and then the extroverted feeling introverted sensors there's definitely a difference there um, i think the most noticeable ones are going to of course going to be the uh, estjs and esfjs i need to turn off my notifications my goodness or the the, the sound that it makes let's see here Voice, video, no. Disable all sound notifications, perfect. Okay. Let's see. I'm gonna have some sort of issues that I think I wasn't able to send messages or whatever. I don't know, maybe I could figure out how to fix it. I hope, I do hope. Because, uh, you know, that's where we have a great deal of conversation about well it used to be conversation about MBTI but we have a large number of people that aren't inherently interested in MBTI so a lot of the conversation skews to something else which is fine uh, I don't need to be talking about MBTI all the time because for me after you've done it for 10 years it's now a part of your life and you can't turn it off anymore so it's good to talk about other things um, anyways, as I was saying, so, uh, for ESTJs in the workplace, you've, you've definitely seen them before. Most of the time they're your supervisors at the, you know, at the, the Walmart or the Target or, you know, McDonald's or wherever. They often climb their way to, to those positions because they, you know, much like an ESFJ, they, they do enjoy the micromanagement. They like being in people's business. They like making sure that everything is going exactly how it's supposed to be going. Uh, ESTJs can be gregarious, like they're, you know, they, they at least pretend like they're very well liked and then they carry that attitude. They're usually not too bad, however, as soon as you go outside the lines, you try to do something on your own, that's when they come down on you and say, hey, no, we're, we do things by the book, we do it procedurally, we we have these written manuals that tell us exactly what we're supposed to be doing when we're supposed to be doing it. Which can lead to some issues. And then, of course, if your uh, productivity is low, then they, you know, ax you. With not much uh, thought put into it outside of that. If, if you're costing them money, they, they get rid of you. Understandably. It's a business. ESFJs, though, uh, they're, of course, more people-oriented. Oftentimes, when you see them, I mean, they still do the supervising thing to make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, but they'll take whatever moments they can to talk to you about your personal life because they want to get to know you. And so they're, they're far more talkative. They laugh more. You know, obviously, it's a fake laugh, but they laugh more. They want you to feel comfortable with them so that they can, you know, better uh, manipulate you into doing the things that they want you to do. Kind of. ISFJs and ISTJs, they just do their work and they they do their best at whatever the tasks they're given uh, is, and then they go on with their day. They're not, they're, they're not exactly out-of-the-box thinkers or anything. So, there's that. They just do their job and then they, uh, well, you know, especially in the case of an ISTJ, they just do the work they're supposed to be doing. They do it by the book, and then they want to go home and do whatever it is that they're most comfortable with doing. Uh, many, like the last ISTJ I had was uh, in kind of vaguely, sort of in my life, 
he was a next door neighbor and his life was go to work, pay his bills, come home and then play. I think the last game he was playing was like Assassin's Creed Odyssey. That was the last time I had, uh, I had talked to him. No wife, no kids, but he owned a house <laughs> next door and he just lived by himself. I think he was in like his mid forties and that was more or less his life. Not super exciting, not interesting, just that was his life. I've known what well, ISFJs on the other hand, they, they of course have that, uh, that social element that they want to incorporate while they're working. So they can get into other people's business, but it's usually, um, to make sure that they're getting their job done as well. Usually they're your coworkers. Although I, the last ISFJ I talked to was my supervisor and, uh, she would she she never complained about whether or not something was going wrong you know at the job she would just handle it you know and no one would really ever get punished or criticized for not do, doing their job well enough a at least not to their face uh, she would come and complain to me when other people were not doing what they were supposed to be doing that kind of thing so there was that does anyone have any fun stories about introverted sensors in their life? Well, I specifically in the workplace. I'm more interested in intuitive since I guess it might be hard for NE users, for example, and also it, is it possible for NO users or no users to maybe start their careers on lower positions? Uh, I think they meant NI. Possibly. I, I don't want to jump to conclusions here. Is it possible for <clears throat> and I users to maybe start their careers on lower positions? Well, most people start their careers in lower positions. Most certainly. Oh. Uh, most people do not start at CEO and then, you know, finish out their life that way. That's, that's not normal. Most people do start at the lower ends. My, uh, my mother grew up in, uh, my, my mother grew up in a trailer, essentially, uh, out in the, uh, the, the countryside of California. I, a lot of people don't think that California would have, you know, a lot of agricultural area, but they actually did a great deal. And that's where I spent most of my time growing up. And she grew up out there uh, on welfare and what have you and she had to do you know, she had to do a lot of the the basic you know awful work that's required to finally make it somewhere in life so uh, so for her it was getting married at 17 to uh, my father that was uh, they had to like sign you know papers for it to be legal or whatever it had to have you know parents consent etc to have it done and so got married at 17 and then she immediately went to work uh, I think she was working at I, I want to say she I, I remember when I was young she was working at the Walmart at one point but she had me when she was 20 I think and uh, it was all about you know going to school going to the you know the community colleges or what have you and then working her way up and then she continued to work every day until she eventually made it to where she is now. Death awaits the... Uh, why couldn't I talk to that candelabra earlier? And so, yes, uh, introverted intuitives, <clears throat> depending on their, you know, how, how their life is, how they grew up, you know, whether or not they grew up in, with money or if they grew up poor, that'll determine whether or not they have to work in those lower end places, just like it is for everyone else. But it's that it's that drive that makes it unmistakable. They they don't want to do what they grew up doing, you know, how their family life was. They want to branch out, do their own path, do their own thing. Where did you started to see her preference for introverted intuition? Well, I guess it probably, if I could think back, uh, 
it was her always trying to switch to a higher income position wherever she was at. I, I guess that's what I would have first noticed. Uh, she used to, uh, she worked for, I want to say it was called Kenetech. It was like a, a wind turbine kind of plant thing uh, where she was managing those for a time. And then, of course, she moved her way up finding, you know, new positions or uh, new jobs that would uh, keep you know, raising her annual income. And she was not interested in the whole staying at home, raising children kind of life. She was not at all interested in that. And that probably would have been the first clue that she had a strong preference for introverted intuition. She didn't want to do what was normal. Uh, she, she wanted her own path to follow. And so that's what she chose. Yeah. Um, they produce you and your two brothers, right? Uh, yeah, do you think these offspring are always consistent with these types? So I, I was actually talking about that the other day, where um, I, I essentially grew up with uh, my mother, and then of course my two siblings, but also a stepfather and his two children. And I was the only extroverted, feeling-preferenced person in that house. So for a solid, let's say, uh, 11 years, roughly, because she, she removed me from, from her home uh, when I was 15. She had me go stay with my father at 15. And so for like 10 years, I was the only person that had a, a, an actual preference for extroverted feeling, and no one else did. It was uh, INTJ, uh, two I no two INTJs, uh, two ISTJs, an ESFP, an INFP, and then me. And so that was uh, that was a very miserable experience for the most part, except for of course the time I spent with my brother. So I was I was essentially in that house. I was a freak. I was the freak. <laughs> Everyone else had a stronger preference for extroverted thinking and uh, and you know and of course introverted feeling. So like my my brother became an INTJ just like my mother did, uh, but uh, yeah I. Uh, it was just me trying to live life in that house, which didn't go well, by the way. Let's see. Uh, which out of the 16 are most likely not to do a 9-to-5 no matter the payroll? Most likely not to do a 9-to-5? Well, uh, it, it depends on the work. So if I was, uh, personally, if I were an entertainer in, you know, some form and fashion, then I wouldn't have an issue wake doing the 9 to 5 because every day would just be fun and you, you get to talk to people and you get to come up with, you know, ideas for entertaining people or just talking or what have you. So it wouldn't really bother me. But uh, certainly regular 9 to 5 jobs where you're pushing papers or just doing the same monotonous crap over and over again like well ENTPs of course they're not going to be super engaged with that uh, even ESTPs would prefer to have that. like if they were going to have that kind of a job it would need to come with a great deal of benefits to make up for that but most people do they, they do the 9 to 5 and, uh, you know, for uh, money, power, crackers, uh, every bird has its price. A workplace and plan of taking managers' positions over and having a spare room for her daughter immediately thought, and I, with an ambition. That sounds very introverted intuitive, for sure. Does that make it 
so all your family says they can't talk to you. I have, I have similar, and when I talk to my NITE family, act like I'm speaking gibberish. Oh. Family says they can't talk. No, I, I, I talk to everyone. That's what it means to have uh, you know extroverted feeling as something that you're focusing on or you're preferencing, is that you get into the lives of other people. You, you, you want to know what they're doing. You want to know how they're doing and what's going on in their life, and that, that's so that you can better have conversation with that person, so you can better manipulate situations. Now, for good or bad, I, I know that manipulation has a more of a negative connotation to it, but I, I just mean to vaguely control a social setting. You know, for good or bad. Uh, how did that DNA create you? A medical mystery clearly had the ENTP uh, empowerment to make it through. Uh, it just... Uh, mutations happen. That's, that's what I tell people. Like, just because your parents were both introverted sensors does not mean that you can't mutate. I mean, that... That happens. Mutations do happen, just not very frequently. Um, you're you're still going to be, uh, you know, most of the time you will follow. You know, personality is genetic, just like intelligence quotient is is genetic, and so you will pick up traits from your parents. Norm more often than not. Now, my father being an ENFP, that does mean that uh, he he would have passed on to me the that lead extroverted intuition uh, preference for life. Let's see. Uh, can I say something on this part? You sure can. Um, which it doesn't always have, like he was saying, it doesn't have that effect at all times. Um, I'm an INTP. My mother is a ESFJ. My brother is a ESFP. My two, of, both of my sisters are ENFPs and ENFJs. So I'm the only thinker. Um, freaks. Learn to be your own friend. That's a nice way to look at it. Uh, granted, I'm not even friends with me, so... Me and I, we're just... We just don't click like we should. Let's see what else we I'm got I'm friends here. with me on some days. Some days we don't get along. My day job sucks, and it is not a good fit for any NTP. Because it lacks, it, it lacks creativity. Although there's a people element to it, I suppose. My character is being chain-feared into a wall, and I cannot escape. That sucks. Let's see, what else we got here? Oh, right, so we're talking about uh, types in the workplace. Now, once again, I had a, I made Patreon videos about those specific cognitive functions in the workplace. Uh, let's see. We talked about introverted sensing. Now we could talk about extroverted sensing in the workplace. Uh, how would you think a typical INFP would be seen, would be seen as in the eyes of their coworkers? How would a typical INFP be seen in the eyes of their co-workers? Um, it depends on whether or not... I, mean, I, I don't know what you mean by typical, because it, in the United States, everyone is miserable. More often than not. We, that, that, those are the times that we live in currently. No one's oftentimes very happy, so... Uh, if an INFP is having a, a particularly bad time in life, well, they're going to be seen as depressed. <laughs> like, that's pretty normal. So, a typical INFP that's not having a good life and they're, you know, stocking shelves at the Target, and, you know, not going to be having a good time. Let's 
let's see here. Hi, Abigail. What's the best thing about this ENFP? Who's this ENFP? Uh, this game is Neverwinter Nights, a very old game. I think it came out in 2004 or something. Uh, let's see, based on their cognitive function and uh, uh, graphology. Uh, no, I haven't looked into graphology. Uh, my, my handwriting is atrocious, right? It's like doctor handwriting. It's really bad. And so I, I, I'm not sure what that's supposed to say about me, but I would assume that there are other people that also have atrocious handwriting that share no cognitive functions with me whatsoever. Although, possibly, uh, graphology is measuring something outside of what is typical with MBTI. Uh, based on their cognitive functions, uh, how would they be seen by their co-workers? Well, most INFPs are nice people. But they, uh, when you get them on a, in in a one on one situations, they tend to be overly sharing, and they oftentimes forget to ask or notice whether or not people care about what it is that they're saying. So that can lead to them being ostracized from others. So it's possible. Uh, I think I'm going to need to teleport out of here because I'm just being chain feared by stuff. <laughs> What's next here? Graphology is the psychology of handwriting, yes. Uh, let's see. As for extroverted sensors in the workplace, well, of course, they're going to be more uh, practical with the things that they're supposed to be doing. So, I mean, they're, they're going to get the job done more, more often than not, depending on which extroverted sensor it is. But uh, they'll, they'll, they'll get the work done. They, they don't really care often about the work that they're doing. They want to do it, you know, well enough to still be hired on. But if you were working with, let's say, an ESTP, uh, my cousin was working at the uh, working at a Walgreens in Oregon, not super long ago, and uh, he enjoyed, you know, how simplistic the work was, and that he got to talk to people. But he didn't really care to stay at the job. He wasn't really that interested, and uh, he was even he was looking to get out of uh, of Walgreens. But he did his job, he did it well, he was promoted to supervisor within, you know, a couple of months because of, you know, his work ethic and just doing the job and, and doing it quickly and efficiently, finding whatever ways that he could to make the job more palatable for him or to get it done faster. But I suspect that he did the more, he wanted the, the manual labor portion of it done as quickly as possible so that he could get back to the more entertaining things, which is talking to people. Let's see. Do you think it is good to have different cognitive functions? Well, oh, for relationships, do you think it is good to have different cognitive functions? Uh, sort of. Kind of. Uh, it's... It depends on, on what it is that we're, we're, we're thinking is good for, for relationships. So do you, do you want to have a balanced relationship where someone is focusing on the things that you often forget? If, if that's the case, then absolutely. That, that's what you're going to want. So I, I talk about, uh, for men anyways, I, I say that you know, one, of the, one of the best companions they can have, you know, in, in you know, the United States at least, is uh, an ISFP female. That's you know, one, of the, one of the better companion personalities. And so even for me and an ENTP, it's good to have someone that is uh, focused on those more physical aspects of life, th you know, things that they can help me with because I can't be bothered to do them. So that's super helpful. 
kind of a thing. But, you know, if, if you're looking for a partner who's going to always be on board with all the weird, crazy, uh, morally ambiguous subjects that I want to talk about, well, an ISFP isn't always going to be very uh, helpful in conversation. And in many cases, you may end up saying something that they're really going to take offense over, which can be an issue. But is that worth not getting into a relationship with an ISFP? Personally, I mean, granted, at my age, I, I, I kind of, you know, I, I more or less know better and that you should pick a partner that has the same interests as you, not necessarily the same cognitive functions. So if you want to have those conversations, go find other people to have those conversations with the ISFP. So long as you're, you know, loyal and you are considerate of their you know, feelings and their wants and desires once in a while, then everything's going to be cool there while you can go out and talk, you know, have those other types of conversations with, with other people. Sort of a thing. Out of INTPs, INFPs, ENTPs, and ENFPs, who are the best human lie detectors to the worst in this category? <sighs> a lie detection is, well, I would tell you that the two best lie detectors, because of their preference for people, uh, well, I mean, the, the best one, of course, is going to be the ENTP. The ENTPs obsess over possibilities and things like that, which, of course, inevitably leads you to uh, consider people as puzzles, and you will eventually want to know why people are saying the things that they say. Now, uh, granted, my, my video, however many years ago, about ENTPs did cover this, but ISFJs do lie detecting very well, although their lie detecting is a bit different because they focus on memory. So they remember the things that were said or the things that were done with, uh, you know, involving them. So it's easier for them to see when someone did this, you know, they, they did A some months back and now they're doing B this time. And that, of course, leads them to suspect that the person's not being uh, honest. But as for those four personality types, if I were to to rank them, I would like to think that INTPs aren't that far behind on lie detecting. Um, but I, I would just say that ENTPs would be probably towards the top, whereas uh, INFPs would be towards the bottom. From what I know is the best detecting wise. Yes, um, that helps to have those two functions. Always consistent handwriting. Do you sometimes write a word as single letters you'll only understand? I don't do a whole lot of actual handwriting anymore. It's all keyboard now. So I don't think I do. ESFP, my writing changes from the postal worker saying you have the most beautiful writing I've seen to legible to wingdings. I'm not sure what that is. I also have two signatures, my formal and my autograph. Hmm. How to impress your boss using MBTI. Should you try acting like your boss type? No, no. Or your boss compatible type. For example, ESTJ boss or ISTP boss. You have to placate whoever your boss is. If you want to get ahead, uh, that's generally how you have to do it. You have to uh, find what it is that they enjoy and then pounce on it. So when I was working at the Walmart, I wanted to move from the warehouse to electronics so that I could sell electronic devices to people because I actually know about electronics. And so I, it would have been very helpful to have me there. So I had to get to know the, uh, there was a, it was like the, uh, supervisor, uh, but like something different. Like they, while I was working there, they eventually got rid of that supervisor position that was between like assistant manager and, um, the associate or whatever. They, they ended up removing that position. But at the time it was an ESTJ who was running electronics and this ESTJ liked playing world of Warcraft. So, 
uh, if I wanted to get into the, that electronics position, I'd have to get to know him and then talk to him a lot and then listen to his stories. And he loved telling me about his stories, usually his stories involving making money, uh, especially involving World of Warcraft, like about how he makes all of his gold and, you know, work in the auction house, that sort of a thing. And then after so many months, I was eventually picked for the electronics position. So each personality type is going to want, you know, different kinds of behaviors out of their uh, out of their employees so you have to find out what it is that they enjoy doing in a social setting and then just be a part of that whatever that happens to be so if, if your boss was an ENTJ then you have to personally be benefiting their life you're either making them a bunch of money or you're taking care of uh, certain responsibilities that they would normally have and you would need to be doing those things so you would just need to be essentially their slave and if you were a good enough slave then they may decide to move you up in position just to keep you around because you were so good at being their slave kind of a thing let's see what do you think about INTP and INTJ relationship friendships uh, that's going to depend on that INTP's level of Asperger. That's really what it's going to come down to, because INTJs are trying to move forward, and INTJs do not want setbacks. So if the INTP is hindering their progress for whatever reason, then they're going to get axed, generally speaking. But in theory, it can work. Like, any any relationship pairing can work as long as they have similar interests that allow them to have fun together. Pleasant memories over a long period of time. It creates love. Uh, uh, does everyone have ESTJ boss? I believe mine is also ESTJ. That's just where ESTJs normally land. Obviously not every ESTJ makes it to, you know, CEO or anything like that. I mean, most of them, most of them don't, obviously. Most people don't. But ESTJs enjoy being micromanagement. They, they actually enjoy having, it, it, it sets them up with a lot of tasks that need to be done that they can actually get done and scheduled out in a reasonable period of time. They don't have to do a whole lot of thinking outside the box. They have people to do that for them. They just need to make sure that they clear all the checkpoints. And as long as the rest of their life is good, they've got, you know, they've they've got the the two-story house, the 2.5 kids, the wife or the husband, I guess. It, as long as they've got their life, you know, more or less figured out, then they don't necessarily care about moving any further forward. So a lot of them, yeah, they a lot of them don't have that. My, my grandfather, being an ESTJ, he's uh. Like, I think he's like 86 now. Uh, he worked at the cannery in Modesto, California, or was it... It was just outside of Ceres, I think. I'm not... Ceres, California. And he worked at the cannery. He was promoted within like six months to a supervisor position. He was a supervisor for 30 years at the cannery. <laughs> He didn't... Life was good for him. He had the house. He, he lived on a property. He had his two kids. Everything was good. He didn't necessarily need to move up anymore. He didn't need any extra responsibility. He had everything. So he was good. Uh, how was the electronic experience for you? It was great. I had... Uh, before I left Walmart, I had... 26 customer commendations. So that meant that people, after interacting with me, actually had to go out of their way, take time out of their day to go to customer service and personally tell me that I did a great job at helping them and then, of course, being nice and all those great things. So never got a plaque, by the way. I was supposed to get one, but I never did. It's quite sad. Or at least it would have been if I cared that much. Oh, goodness. Let's get that back up. 
Uh, yeah, Black Friday electronics was uh, entertaining as well. Uh, my boss came to me the night before Black Friday, and she says to me, this is my, my new supervisor, uh, my, my, my supervisor being my assistant manager. Uh, uh, she was a, an ISTP, assistant manager, which was an interesting experience. And she says to me, I need you to sell at least 200 of these Chromebooks on Black Friday. <laughs> and so I had to spend a portion of my night that night doing homework on what the benefits were of this Chromebook and then try to push those. I ended up selling every single one of them. I said they were great for kids, especially ones that have never had a computer before because those Chromebooks were terrible, like awful, terrible devices. I don't know much about the ISFJ personality type, but I have been looking into the other four I just mentioned because I think I am one of these four. I am not a 100% sure on which one I am yet. Well, uh, if you hang around my Discord, I'm certain that someone will tell you. Of course, you can also schedule a typing appointment in which we could do that as well. What types make the best parents? Well, we'd have to define best. Now, if you're wanting uh, parents that will just teach their children to grow up and be the same level of productiveness as a member of society, then you would, of course, go with an introverted sensor, uh, typically. Those are... They generally make, you know, fair parents because they are, they're bound by the rules of whatever was socially acceptable, you know, traditionally speaking. Which, for the most part, has kept the country going for however many hundreds of years. So, usually you can go with that. Let's see... Uh, I'm glad that you are a good lie detector because people lie every day. Often. I used to lie a lot when I was younger, but now I only do it if I need to or really want to for whatever I think is a good enough reason for me to do so. That's fair. That's how most people do it. Uh, Alright, said questionable ISTP had dropped 18 pounds since we spoke, avoiding McDonald's eating mangoes. Well, self-contact, con well, well, self-contracted, he's getting on with it. Oh, okay, well, that's good. It's good to lose weight. I have not been losing weight. It has not been a... I, I really need to lose weight, but... Such a pain. We're looking for a... Something that makes me immune to fear, which I think is a lesser belt of guiding light. Perfect. I'll take it. And we'll take the one that makes me immune to death magic as well, because I've got the money. I'm playing a... Uh, I, I made my uh, character uh, uh, to try to emulate what Riddick would be as a D&D &D character, by the way. So he's uh, got... Uh, I'm supposed to have five levels in Rogue. I got de-leveled during a fight, but... Got some levels in Rogue, some levels in Fighter, and then Shadow Dancer and Weapon Master. It seemed uh, very Riddick-like. Oops, I keep doing that. Let's see. Same, used to lie a lot when I was young, but then you gotta keep the lie going, which can get exhausting. You gotta come up with better lies. Now, I've been lying to people for... A long time, for sure. I, I would say we're, we're 25 years I've been really lying to people about, you know, whether it's big or small lies. And um, you, you, you get better at lying, for sure. You make sure that the lies are convincing enough with, you know, very little to no loose ends that you have to come up with. Now, however, if you're a, if you're an ENTP, you can come up with an entire novel worth of lies to someone and you know whether or not you can keep up with it of course that takes practice but you can just come up with new lies on the spot let's see comment person asks what mbti is a sea urchin istj like most animals <laughs> 
They just do the same thing over and over again. They do what makes sense to them regarding their environment. Let's see, Kanye West, Andrew Tate, etc. All examples of male ENTP saying disturbing things about women. Is it linked to... Th you think Andrew Tate is an ENTP and Kanye West is an ENTP? Because they're not. So it's... Uh, maybe you mistyped ENTP as... Or that was a... What do you call it? The wrong spelling, perhaps. I enjoyed my time promoting electronics, but I had to believe in the electronics I was promoting. Sold $20,000 worth of Oral-B products back in the early 2000s in three weeks. Well, that's good. Most people are concerned with dental hygiene, so that makes sense. You say it's possible for an INTJ personality to be more shy and emotional. To be more shy and emotional than who, an INFP? No. <laughs> Most certainly not. Um, I don't know why a sea urchin would be an ISTP. I don't imagine... The ability to... Uh, so, when you see someone really preferencing introverted thinking, you know what they're doing? They're not doing anything other than thinking. They're actually just thinking. They're trying to find accuracy, a, a personal understanding, and an accurate, and come up with accurate conclusions about what's going on, in, you know, in their life. Animals don't do that. They, they, they don't. Animals. Uh, there, there has never been. I, I've always been around animals my whole life, and never once did I think to myself, you know, what that animal's doing? It's trying to figure out something. And it's going to sit there for a long period of time until it figures out logically how to accomplish whatever it is it wants to accomplish. Animals don't do that. Animals rely on instincts, reflex, and doing the same things over and over again. You might make a argument that cats are a little bit more curious. You know, uh, but once again, that, that might just be instinctual. We, you know, it, it would be hard to really place a cognitive function on that. But... Typically, animals just do the same things over and over and over again. And so I generally classify them as ISTJ. Andrew Tate, what he tries to portray uh, on on camera, from what I have seen on you know some basic interviews here and there, uh, especially when he's trying to be all self-help related, uh, you, you could make an argument that he's being... Um, uh, an ESTP, maybe you could, but in many of his rants, I got the impression that he was coming from personal feeling, and I gave him an ESFP uh, look. But once again, I, he's he's playing a character, and so I couldn't tell you exactly who he is. I would need to sit down and have a conversation with him in private, of course, to really uh, get the idea of who he was as a person. Let's see. Especially in the UK, the stereotype is true. Which stereotype? I must have remembered it wrong. Last stream, I thought you had said that you believed animals were ISTP. Uh, yeah, I... I do not get the impression that animals are ISTP. You have never seen an animal ponder why it eats grass? No, I have never seen a cow just stand there staring at a patch of green grass and thinking to and and me thinking that it was you know pondering why it needed to eat this grass i never got that impression from a cow and i i lived on a ranch for many many years out in modesto never got that impression for everyone unsure of their mbti join the discord and check my post every single test i took came out with the same personality you named the test and it's okay uh, yes uh uh, online tests are terrible. Andrew Tate might be an ESTJ. He might actually be an ESTJ, especially if he grew up in a very specific lifestyle. You'll need to have a debate with Andrew Tate. I don't... I, I'm not sure I've heard anything that he's said that I would necessarily debate against. Uh, usually it's like male self-help stuff, you know, uh, you know, don't be a crybaby, essentially go out there and just start doing things. You know, one thing that he said I, I found particularly poignant was 
he he was telling he was telling whoever was interviewing him he said m you know young men or men in general perhaps would come to him and ask him how do i get you know ripped how do i get you know super jacked super fast and he said why does it have to be fast I if it was easy then no one would respect it you know getting you know that big and having all the muscles he was he was very persistent in saying that things that uh, that have value you have to work towards that's what gives it value for most people and i thought that was correct uh, if you could just get super buff in like a week uh one everyone would do it and two no one would care if you were super buff because it didn't take a lot of effort out of you to do it so hard things get respect when they're done Where is my lesser belt of guiding light? What did I trade out for that? I lost some strength, but at least I won't get feared. I'm 100% sure he is a character. The bald head is part of it. Possibly. Uh, he's he's playing a character, and he makes money doing it. So, And he gets a lot of attention doing it, and it seems like that's what he's... That's why he's doing it. The vice guy and bring us a box of chocolates was quite the adventure box of chocolates I'm not uh, sure of that anyways back to uh, extroverted sensors and the jobs that they're in they do those jobs but generally speaking they don't care about those jobs eventually um, <clears throat> eventually though an extroverted sensor would like to get into a job that is more yeah, that they would find more interesting or they, they found to be more practical so uh, uh, ESTP that I knew he was in his mid 60s and I think he said you know he did the usual job stuff he of course spent a lot of time getting to know people talking to people you know being a little bit of a a tomcat as my late grandmother would call it uh, but he said when he was in his late 20s or something or around there he saved up money and he bought welding equipment and he learned to weld and then he was a welder for like the next 30 years and he, he, you know, he would do uh, contracted jobs or, you know, people would come in asking him for, you know, like just doing these single gigs here and there. He'd make a lot of money. He'd go out, spend it at the bar, you know, or and then put some of it, you know, into his house or and then, you know, build stuff uh, for his house. So that he, he called his house uh, his retirement plan so that when he was done working, he would just sell off his house for some ridiculous amount of money and then, you know, live on a boat for the rest of his days kind of a thing so uh, extroverted sensors their life they, they want their life to be more than just work and they 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 try to find other things to entertain them outside of work whereas for an introverted sensor they don't mind if their life is very scheduled and routine as a matter of fact that's what they prefer they want to go to work because that's what they're supposed to do so they can have that money and then maybe have some interest outside of that but they they get very uncomfortable with the idea that they're not on that routine of work whereas uh, an extroverted sensor of course is going to be more uh, open to uh, not having that much of a routine uh let's see what type do you think Elon Musk is? I've been told that he was an INTJ, but realistically, I, I have no idea. Uh, street Urchin MBTI of the Liver King. I don't know who the Liver King is. Sounds like a cool dude, though. Does the, does the Liver King have, like, a golden liver that, you know, can't ever be jaundiced? Today's stream is about whatever it is I find on the video suggestions page of my discord and so someone had brought up what personality so you know some personality types are like in the workplace and i thought well we can talk about that let's see what three times or what three items would you bring on a deserted island uh <sighs> I would have to give that some thought because my, you know, I, can I bring any item that I can think of? <laughs> because uh, on a on a on a deserted island, uh, I would bring 
a teleportation device that would allow me to teleport off the island whenever I wanted to. That would be one. Although the Hustlers University is a scam, there's still a lot of truth to the things that Andrew Tate talks about. I don't hate him, nor do I see his entire lifestyle as something to pursue, however. No. Some people want to want to dominate the world that they live in. You know, they, they want to have more control over it, for sure. And to do that, you need to be more physically oriented. You need to be more practical, more pragmatic. Uh, so that you can accomplish that. And so for a lot, for some people, for well, here's the thing. For most people, his advice is going to work because most people are concerned with the things that he's concerned with. But for the other 25%, not going to be that interested. Um, I heard he was out of prison. So hopefully he's uh, doing well, I guess. What three items would you bring to beat Andrew Tate with uh, 100,000 IQ and he is 100 times stronger and uh, you in a room? Uh, what would I bring to beat Andrew Tate? <laughs> in what capacity? Like a game of chess? <laughs> I would uh, bring something that would essentially uh, make him brain dead I suppose that that would probably work perhaps a, a paralytic a poison or something would you say uh, what do you think about Enneagram I don't know a lot about Enneagram I have read some things about it but to me it it seemed like someone's Enneagram could change based on their current life situation and so if that's how it is then it doesn't really help me all that much i'm looking for more of the core uh the, the foundations of what makes people who they are would you say that being stubborn could be linked to certain cognitive functions uh everyone's gonna be stubborn about some things so uh i, I wouldn't say necessarily uh, uh, linked to a specific cognitive function, I would say that uh, some cognitive functions are stubborn in certain situations about things, yes. But no, I don't think there's any one cognitive function that just makes someone inherently stubborn. How can an ENFP boss and an ISTJ successfully work together? Well, you shouldn't have a problem with an ENFP boss at all. There, there should be virtually no problems. In fact, the only problem that you would be worried about is losing your ENFP boss. But most ENFPs don't make it to boss position. An ENFP is going to know how to handle the ISTJ employee. So, you know, and, and help them be as successful as possible in their position. What three items would be... Or, or what three items would the Liver King bring? Lies, steroids, and cow poop is that about right let's see uh, introverted intuitives in the workplace well, they're definitely all about making sure they get their job done and they're not really going to care that much about any one employee a whole lot they're of course going to be more concerned with making sure that they keep their position or uh, or build up so that they can you know move on to the next position they're just very focused people in the workplace very conscientious for certain much like introverted sensors they're they're oftentimes very conscientious except that they're also ambitious and they want to keep you know moving up i talked to um, there i knew one intj in uh, at the walmart she was she was very young and she was, um, you know, she would do her job, most certainly, but she was saying that she wasn't going to be there for very long. She was moving up to another position somewhere else in some other company. So, you know, they do their job, and they make sure that nothing... They, they don't want their life to go wrong. They don't want to make any missteps, so they make sure that they do what they're supposed to be doing, whatever they've determined to be the most uh, logical course of action for advancement. 
Let's see here. I believe there is a connection between the two, my Enneagram and Tri-Type align now. It's beautiful. Well, that sounds it sounds neat. Sounds uh, revealing. Could be helpful. You have to face overpowered Andrew in a room alone. Oh, that sucks. What am I supposed to do? Uh, I, I could try to talk him to death. I sincerely doubt that'll work, but I can give it a shot. Andrew Tate is like a character in WWE. Question, who is the real Andrew Tate? No idea. How can you recognize an ISTJ from an INTJ? Well, there's multiple ways that you'd be able to uh, recognize, but are you talk in what context? When you're having conversation or just when you see them? You know, out, out in the wild or something. You know, how... Uh, How would you, like, uh, we need context. You've, you've got to have the context, otherwise it's open up. It's, it's open to an infinite amount of interpretations as to how you could recognize them. So, if you're... Oh, good. I'm glad Sylvia's here. Now, if you're trying to, uh, like, look at their resume, maybe, I mean, that's still not going to be super great. I, it depends on the ISTJ. So is it an ISTJ that grew up in a very poor community where crime was rampant everywhere? Like, then, yeah, you're going to definitely be able to tell the difference between the ISTJ that's currently in prison and the INTJ that chose to, you know, go to school, get a great education, and then find a, a fantastic career. Yeah, you'll notice the differences there. Do I believe in ghosts? I want to believe in ghosts. Now, I've had some weird childhood experiences that you might be able to consider as ghostly experiences, but in but in terms of actually going to like a haunted place and seeing a ghost, I, I have not. I, I want to see one, most certainly. I am open to the idea that ghosts can be real. I just need to get out there and go find one. I'm supposed to go ghost hunting next time I go to Oregon and see if we can't find one. Uh, yes. Very, oh, very Vincent Price of you. Uh, let's see. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, what do we got here? Donald Trump was his MBTI type. Donald Trump, to me, seemed very ESTJ to me. Down from, you know, from the way that he speaks to people uh, and, and how he wants to, you know, handle things politically. It seemed, uh, it seemed very ESTJ to me. Could an NIFE or FENI have trouble managing people or maybe have trouble mentioning to people how they're doing something wrong at work because I don't think TE would have that problem. Yes, extroverted thinking does not typically have that issue unless, of course, the, you know, the extroverted thinking user really likes that person, but uh, which usually they don't like them that much. But, uh, yes, a anyone anyone that has a strong preference for extroverted feeling is going to have more of an issue telling people what they're, what that, you know, what they're doing wrong, because when they do that, they're always risking confrontation. They're risking upsetting the social atmosphere. So they may, now, of course, the more experienced ones, uh, they probably have a number of, you know, tips and tricks to be able to kindly, gently explain to someone that they're doing something wrong in one way or another. So they're going to have more trouble with it than, yeah, sure, an extroverted thinker. Extroverted thinkers just care about the efficiency and, you know, making sure that everything is, you know, going in a direction that benefits the company or them or whatever. So they're not, you, they, don't, don't, they, they don't usually have issues uh, firing people <laughs> when they're doing bad. You versus INTJ and you can't talk and you are in your bedroom and he wants to assassinate you and he has no visible weapons. What, so am I supposed to try to disarm them or subdue them and I can't talk? Is that the idea? Because if this is a purely hypothetical situation in my mind, then I'm going to come up with a great number of ridiculous sounding things to handle the situation. But if we're talking about 
in my bedroom in, in reality. And I'm trying to defeat the assassin. Oh, I've got a whole mess of things that I could, I suppose, use to distract them. And they might even trip over how messy the room is and then hurt themselves and fall unconscious and then I'd be safe, right? The most ENTPs give off a younger appearance and vibes. If so, could this also be true with other personality types? Which ones look younger than their actual age? I think that's just a genetic thing. Genetically speaking, like I've got two very old, still alive grandparents. So perhaps I just age a little bit more slowly than the average person. But that also helps to be super chill all the time. I am, I'm at, I try to maintain maximum chill throughout my entire life. And that obviously, you know, you get less wrinkles, you look less tired, you know, those kinds of things. Why would an ENTP seek an ISFP for a long-term partner when they can't share a single long, interesting conversation? Because, now granted, I, I remember that being an issue when I was younger. I think I was around 25-ish, and I thought to myself, I'm really not interested in, you know, this person anymore because I, I can't really share in any uh, conversation. As I got older, <clears throat> I realized how unimportant that was. Being able to have a, these long, crazy conversations with someone, that's good. That, that can be great. But I can have other people in my life to share in those conversations. What I actually need is a companion to help me with all of the awful decisions that I make in my life. Someone to be close to, someone that will partake in whatever activities I enjoy, you know, being a, a part of. And when it comes to the conversations, I can talk to other people. I don't need my partner to give me that. What I need my partner to do is, is to be there for me, to assist me in all of the menial things that I can't stand and, you know, be physically close to on occasion. That's what I need, realistically. Let's see. Well, uh, the real Andrew Tate, if the real Andrew Tate did what he did, he really has no balls. A real man has real balls. I have no idea what we're talking about there. I know I cannot prove in the existence or non-existence of them, just like the existence of God or free will, but I don't believe in them. Oh, we're talking about ghosts, I think, in that moment. I want to believe in ghosts, and so I'm open to the idea that that it's out there. I just need to go find it. Or I hope to find it anyway. Much of my atheism is predicated on my deeper understanding of theology, philosophy, and science. Well, that's good. Could you possibly mix up ENFP with extroverted feeling then? Because I remember I mentioning that there's as sacrificial as FE users. What's the difference there? Oftentimes, when you're looking for cognitive function preference, you're not looking at what someone does, but why they do it. So, for example, uh, most personalities wake up and eat breakfast. Is that because of specific cognitive functions? Uh, not particularly. Everyone has their own different reasons as to why they do things. An INTJ might decide to wake up and not eat breakfast because they're worried about their figure. And they're like, nope, this is going to make me unhealthy today. I'm just not going to, I'm, in, I'm instead going to go get some coffee and then I'm going to go to work. Whereas an ESFP might wake up and say, wow, I'm really hungry, so I'm going to go ahead and eat something for breakfast. Kind of a thing. It's, it's the why we do things. Not often, not, not as often the what. So in the case of um, an ENFP being sacrificial, they enjoy being sacrificial to the ones that they love. Most certainly, people that they have an emotional vested interest in, they enjoy being sacrificial because it makes them feel good to do so. Whereas an ISFJ can be sacrificial with their time because they believe that's what they're supposed to do. They believe that that's the reason they are here, is to help other people, so they end up sacrificing all of their time to help others. So they do. They end up doing roughly the same thing. They may take different approaches to it, but they end up doing the same thing, but for different reasons. Let's see. What type do you think is Walter White? 
it's been it's been too long since I've watched an episode of I, I think we're talking about Breaking Bad I think right Walter White is in Breaking Bad he makes meth he was a school teacher or something pretty sure that's who we're talking about and I I, I don't know I, I would need to, to yeah that's what it. it is is that what it's from uh, let's see yep, yep. INTP until scientifically logically proven fact yes an INTP would oftentimes want to know factually with whatever whatever they believe was a, an objective reason for believing that uh, you know things like the afterlife exist something to be measured in most cases whereas I might be ENTP considering all the character traits I have I do look about 10 to 12 years younger than my actual age I'm 34 most people young and old think I am in early 20s it is, you know, I, I find that being at maximum chill really helps keep the uh, keep the wrinkles off. When you talk about an ISFP, it looks like you're just looking for a maid. Have you already been in a romantic relationship with someone you also had deep conversations with? Uh, as for looking for a maid, a sexy maid, does that help? <laughs> and besides, maids just take care of the house. I, I need I need someone who's willing to take care of most aspects of my life that I don't care about, which is virtually everything related to tedium and monotony. I I can't can't stand it. So um, in terms of I'm looking for a companion, most certainly. Someone that wants to help me with my life so that maybe I can help them with their life. You know, uh, transactional that way. Uh, all of life is transactional, so yeah. By the way, what is your actual name? My actual name is uh, Lyle. Let's see. INTP, INTP, it begins with the want, then the proof is within the ghosting. Maybe. Uh, maybe I should legally change my name to Street Urchin. Wouldn't that be fun? Walter White is a quintessential INTJ. So I remember someone telling me that once, and I thought, Ooh, an INTJ? And now, was he like a high school teacher? Um, I'm like kind of setting your sights. High school chemistry teacher. A high school chemistry, chemistry teacher. Now, granted, I, I don't think it's impossible for an INTJ to have the dream of just being a high school chemistry teacher. I... It, that doesn't that doesn't quite fit. Now I understand it, it's it's make believe, right? It's it's you know it, it's fiction is what we're talking about. So you can put certain personalities in fictional positions like that. I understand, but in terms of reality, uh, an INTJ is not going to want to stop at being a high school chemistry teacher. They would they would want to keep moving up. They want to move up to better positions. So it, it wouldn't be, uh, you know, stopping at high school. It, it would be, you know, the college, university levels of teaching is where they would want to be to make more money and to be more, in quote, successful. So. Vince Jellian is an INTP, though. I don't know who that is. You remind me of my closest friend whom is an intellectual and whom I have in many philosophical and intellectual conversations with. Well, I'm, I'm glad. I do enjoy talking philosophy. <clears throat> Can you describe the ISFJ presidentity type? Oh, okay. Can you describe the ISFJ personality type? Yes, uh, I would. I, I, I think the the shortest, the simplest way to describe them is that they are the backbone of modern day society. They are, uh, they, they're your general workers. They can move up to supervisory positions. A lot of them prefer uh, to be uh, the the females, ISFJ females. They would prefer to be in a uh, stay at home mom position and now of course that's not an option for a great many people these days but that's you know if they that's how they grew up then that's what they end up preferring um they are they're the backbone of society they 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 deal with the crap that most people don't want to deal with especially socially speaking so 
Uh, they have a strong preference for their personal memory, which of course means how they grew up, and the traditions they're in, doing those things, followed by a keen preference for dealing with people, the social aspects, and making sure that everything is going smoothly as possible. And there are uh, no slouches when it comes to thinking things through and deductive reasoning. It's not as big a preference as it is for some personalities, but it's still there. Oh, and they dislike anything that breaks tradition and goes against the grain or uh, thinking. Uh, they don't do a whole lot of thinking outside the box. They would rather things just be simple, predictable, and coordinated. While being nice. I mean, it's fake, but it's still nice. You know, being polite, you know, to people. From my experience, INTPs are the ultimate ghost. <clears throat> Had one in my life for two decades. Now I appreciate it's the INTP's thinking time zone. Huh. Vince Jillian is the creator slash writer of uh, Breaking Bad. Okay. You are in a room and you have to face your own clone with 200 IQ, but he talks faster and he moves slower than you physically, and he has a taser. Can you beat him? It's in reality, but a fake situation. Well, I, I don't assume that I would defeat my 200 IQ clone. I, I, I can't imagine. Because if it's 200 IQ, then I assume it's already planned for every rational, you know, most you know, logical eventuality, and therefore would be in a position to not lose. Intelligence makes up for a lot when determining an outcome. After all, 99.9% .9 of men don't have to deal with my social awkwardness. That makes sense. Which MBTI is most likely to keep a secret, especially if they're your mum? Is most likely not to keep not keep a secret. ESFPs. Um, ESFJs would be up next in terms of keeping secrets, or n not likely to, because in both cases they enjoy gossip. One prefers to see, you know, ESFJs prefer to, would, wouldn't mind spreading gossip or, or rumors just so they can see how other people react to them so that they can catalog, you know, whether or not they're doing the, the right thing for keeping control of the social situation. The other one uh, doesn't mind talking about rumors because they enjoy the attention from talking about rumors. What are your Fallout special stats? Personal, not in the game. That's a good question. I would have to uh, think on that one. Higher up on charisma and intelligence, lower on constitution, physical attributes, uh, maybe a little more dexterous than average. Oh, and as for luck, I'm, I'm almost maxed out on luck. Otherwise, I wouldn't be alive. I would say that INTJs are the most secretive. Uh, could be. They could be the most secretive uh, ISFJs I've known to not really want to talk about themselves. ISTJs as well. Do you tell jokes or are you serious most of the time? Serious includes a serious speech. Life is a joke. Life is a joke. Life is a game. And it's always best to have fun while you're doing it. So, not a, I'm not a very serious person. No. Maximum chill. You can't be serious all the time and not develop wrinkles or prematurely aging skin. I'm glad Neverwinter Nights basically played itself while I was reading off questions. There was a monster somewhere that does instant kill stuff. Like, it literally just cast a spell of death magic. Can I fight all these guys and win? Probably. Sneak attack. How do you build your sense of morals? <laughs> morals. 
Um, I have... I, I don't... Morals are... Morals are for other people. I... I, I look at every situation as dispassionately as, as I can. And so morals don't enter the equation. More often than not. Um, so I don't have morals. What even, you know, what even are morals, really? Just personal, subjective views on how life should be? I'm like, no, that's... It's not something I normally discuss. I'm not that interested. So if you're talking to an ENTP that has a whole bunch of morals, then it's not an ENTP. Well, I I, I don't I, I don't necessarily say that ISFJs like to talk to people in general. I think it's something they have to do. It's something they believe that they need to be doing. Whether or not they like it, I, I would imagine, depends more on who they're talking to. Uh, yes, ISFJs don't like to reveal much about themselves based on their behavioral patterns. Yeah, most certainly. So you say, uh, oh no, I already read that one. What sort of topics do they like to talk about, or more so people who like to listen to people's problems and offer advice and solutions? Uh, they don't, in the IS, with the ISFJs I've talked to, they don't often offer advice on things. They mostly just want to listen to what it is that you're saying. And then if you want advice and you ask them personally, then yeah, sure, they, they may give you whatever advice they can offer, which is of course going to be based on their personal experience as to what you should be doing. But... They're not there to push their personal opinions onto people. Uh, as for what kinds of people they like to listen to, that purely depends on how they grew up and what they feel most comfortable with, personally. Let's see. Morality is a bit of a social construct. Uh, I have what you have. Principles, not so much morals. Yes, uh, principles, I have in principle. People should think more before they make decisions. That's what I like to see in people. I want to see them take time to think about something thoroughly before they make a decision. I second this principle. Yeah. Any other type lacking morals? Yeah, ENTJs lack morals. Uh, let's see, you're meeting your clone, but he's throwing banana peels at you. He can move ten times faster than you, and he has half your height. You have the Force as weapon, but weaker than the Jedi. Well, like, what's what would that look like if I have the Force, but it's weaker than a Jedi? Would I have, like, some levels of precognition? Could I only see, like, a quarter of a second into the future? Don't know what you mean. Would you say it's possible for an INFP slash ISFP type to be very good, efficient at school? Yeah. Anything. So here's the fun part about school these days. The more obedient you are, the higher your grades are going to be. So if they tell you to do the work, then you do the work. And that's it. <laughs> that's how it was, uh, you know, for me in, in high school. Like... It, there were many classes in which if you did the homework and you, it sucked, like you got all the answers wrong or whatever, you turned it into the, into the teacher. Teacher would be like, okay, we're going to give you 100% because you tried to answer all these questions, whether they were right or wrong. Obedience. Obedience was, was most of your grade. So I knew kids in grade school who bombed the tests, like just answered them completely wrong. And they would get, you know, 30%, you know, on the test they would get like anywhere from a C to a B. Failing the test, proving that they didn't understand what they were, you know, what, what the material was. But as long as they did the homework, they got to move up. So that's what good grades means, you know, nowadays for most places. Not, I'm sure there are schools in which they actually prefer that you, you know, do well on the test rather than whether or not you did all the homework. I'm sure those exist. But for most public schools, obedience is more important than your actual working understanding of the material. So, there you go. Is Obama an ENTP or an ENFJ? I... neither of those. I suspected 
that he was probably an ENFP. I suspected that that could have been the case. Uh, but I would need to, you know, get to talking to him. What really... So ENTPs like truth, right? It's For them, it's, it's about truth. And when you go on national television and you still try to you do your best to perpetuate the whole wage gap myth <laughs> knowing you know knowing good and well that it's not true um but you still decide to go on national television and say that to everyone to dis to showcase your lack of understanding you're not an entp you are something else you are a puppet you are a mouthpiece you are saying these things because someone told you to say them it's and ENTPs don't do that. Now, as for whether or not an ENFJ might do that, they might do that. But ENFJs are also very public people. They want to get to know people. They want to be engaged with the public. They want to sway them through, you know, personal connection, kind of a or at least faking a personal connection to people. And so maybe an ENFJ. But I, uh, once again, I, I didn't. I don't see. I didn't see him always being sociable with others like that wasn't his primary goal his primary goal was of course to be president you know sign bills or veto things etc so i got the impression that he was an enfp uh robert downey jr something anyways i forgot the name of the actor from iron Man. Yeah, that's who we're talking about what personality type do you think he portrayed in those rows so in iron man he was being a stereotypical ENTP, including the womanizing and the drinking, duh. And then um, in Sherlock Holmes, he was being an INTP. Especially the like in the beginning of the first movie where they had caught Lord Blackwood, and then he spent the next three months just kind of hanging out in his room, not doing anything. Which, of course, even to the most uh, hard, the, the most resilient INTPs, you stick them in a single room for three months straight they're gonna go nuts too <laughs> now his nuts was a little bit more productive uh, he was trying to create a suppressor for a pistol uh, w when you see him in the scene but uh, still was going nuts obviously let's see here I forgot the name of the act you know we got that one uh, type Joe Biden well Joe Biden's dead and I'm not sure I can type a corpse so uh, cadavers, I'm sure, have their own special personality type uh, list. What MBTI, uh, MBTI is Pennywise? I assumed Pennywise was probably an ESFP, most likely. Um, let's see, I agree, that's how I got good grades in addition with you, you know, being a girl. I'm not sure if the same thing is going on elsewhere other than my country, but basically being a girl had more advantage. Uh, Socrates once said that if you make women your equal, you're not, not your equal. If you make women men's equal, you make them their superior. And, uh, so, if played correctly, yes, young women can have a very specific advantage in today's society. At least here in the West. I don't know what it's like out where you're at. Uh, but I do, I do think that uh, Emma Pennywise might have been an ESFP. Have you, or are you going to make a video on Street Urchin Goes to Personality Database? We did something like that not too long ago. We should probably do it again. I had uh, Harley and Ben with me when we were looking at Personality Database, and I was just going on these rants, especially when it came to the, the Lord of the Rings characters. I just about lost my shit <laughs> reading it. Uh, I can make a video on street urchin finding sea urchins. I would mostly find them on the internet, but yeah. Vengeful Revenant Joe Biden. Uh, I was also convinced that Ruth Bader Ginsburg was dead for like two months before they finally came out with it. <laughs> They were. They, they did not want Trump to appoint a new person on the Supreme Court. Had my game paused this whole time. 
Also, I would love to play Neverwinter Nights with uh, people from the Discord, if anyone actually has a computer. We could do a Neverwinter Nights adventure. It's like playing Dungeons & Dragons, except, you know, there's no dice rolling that you have to do. The computer does all of it, as you can see down here. You can see all of the rolls that are being done. What advices would you give to a young man or a young woman starting their first job? My advice would be to do the job for as long as you want, then find a new job. Unless, of course, your first job is making you like a hundred grand a year, you should probably stick with it and see if you can't move up in the company. Can you make a video on street urchin reacting to street urchins while living on streets? I could probably do that, yeah. Will I? Seems unlikely. Uh, extroverted intuitives in the workplace? Mm. It depends on the, the work that they're in. If they're in a standard workplace position, you know, uh, ENFPs, for example, they'll do their work, but they'll be lost in thought constantly. Uh, ENTPs, when I was in those standard menial workplaces, I was always trying to turn everything I did into a game, and I was more interested in uh, trying to get people to come with me to go do the boring work so that I didn't have to be alone, maybe even convince them to do more of the work than I had to, because I just couldn't be bothered. Sorry to interrupt, but I have a phone call. Okay. A ghoul ravager. Challenge rating overpowering, immune to everything. Immune to sneak attacks, though? No? They're just immune to critical hits. Okay, well. Mind affecting spells? Mm, yes, they are immune. Let's see, did you mention that you love drawing? I I did enjoy drawing when I was uh, younger. I still draw on occasion. When I've got some inspiration to do so. Can you show one random stuff you purchased that you don't really need? That I don't really need? Uh, you know, I, I didn't really need a controller outside of playing Elden Ring, so did I really need it? Probably not. Uh, I mean, you'd have to define what it is you, you know, really need. What do you really need in life to live? Food, air, water, uh, moderate climate. What are your experiences with other ENTPs? Well, I that's, that's a relatively short list because I, I don't you know I, I don't meet a whole lot. Understandably, I, I've met uh, some other people that believed they were ENTPs. I have met them. But uh, my experience with actual ENTPs, uh, they have been varied uh, recently. Uh, my, my good friend, Cal, who very rarely shows himself on my Discord, uh, I, just, I, I just have pleasant conversation with him. It's always fun. We, we, we can take a topic and then it jumps into you know, the, the deep philosophical portions of whatever that topic might have been. Um, talking about, or, or uh, I've, I've been trying to talk to him about games. You know, uh, he's been playing Elden Ring. As a matter of fact, I think he just started playing not too long ago. But he refuses to uh, play with me for the uh, uh, the reforged uh, mods. So, he, he wants to beat the game first, vanilla, and then he'll install the mods, and then we'll probably do a playthrough of that. Should be fun. Um, I knew an ENTP named Paul who grew up in a upper middle class family or possibly a little bit higher the point is that he was rich right rich family and uh he screwed around a lot it wasn't the most well-behaved child obviously um did drugs drank a lot and this is you know 
before and after he turned 18. So, do I like wearing... No, not, not particularly. I, I have this thing, and ESFJ gave it to me when I was in California. And so, I thought it was nice. It gave me, it gave me the surfer vibe, as people would tell me. They think I'm a surfer. I'm like, no, I've never surfed in my life. Uh, another ENTP I worked with at the uh, uh, the Xerox building in uh, Austin, Texas, and he was uh, at the time he was a 52 year old who was in a band, had been in a band for a while, and his full time job was there at the Xerox, and he would just go to the bar with his wife regularly at the end of every day. And cool guy, everyone liked him, understandably. Uh, also had super long hair that he straightened out, like, every day. <laughs> uh, let's see. What do you think PewDiePie's personality type is? I don't watch PewDiePie, so I couldn't tell you. Oh, he, uh, I've seen some clips of him doing some funny things, but I don't watch his stuff. Mark to pliers. I barely know who that is. Uh, which intuitive types are described as having ADHD and which ones are described as having Asperger's? Uh, sometimes they're one and the same, like uh, INTPs, for example. I would imagine many of them get diagnosed with ADHD. They tried to give me ADHD as well, but of course I'm better with people. Uh, but no, as for the jewelry, I don't particularly like wearing jewelry. Although I had my ear pierced, I'm sure it's closed up by now. My left ear, I had it done when I was 16 on a whim. Um, and it was with one of those you know, piercing guns, so it was super fast and virtually painless. It was nice. Uh, what do you think is the cause for ENTPs indulging in vices? Because <clears throat> life early on for an ENTP is just full of exciting, wondrous mysteries. You, you know, you're, you're eight years old. Life is essentially still brand new to you. There's so many things to you know look forward to. And then as you get older and life becomes terribly uninteresting, usually around 15, you start trying to branch out to make life interesting in whatever ways that you can because everything else has become mundane and boring so by the time you're 25 you just ho hopefully you've got some good things going on in your life that makes it worth getting out of bed in the morning but for most ENTPs that's not that's not generally going to be the case and so you want to do things to calm yourself down or to get rid of any anxieties you have about being perpetually bored and so usually it's drinking drinking is the is the way to go about doing that. And, and, and the fun part about drinking is that you can moderate how much of that effect you want. So, for example, when I do drink nowadays, I, I more or less quit drinking hard liquor, and it's it's just, you know, beers or seltzers. Well, I can measure how intoxicated I want to get, and, and I don't have to worry about necessarily dealing with a hangover if I don't want to. But the alcohol can calm the thoughts down. And make life a little bit more enjoyable. What do you think? No, we got that one done. Tell us more about your art in the background if you'd like to share it. Well, that art is only mine in that I, you know, own it. I didn't make it. That, that was something I found on, like, Deviant Art or something, like, six years ago. And I thought it looked neat, so I got it. And then there's the two smaller portraits. One's of Darth Vader and the other one's of Iron Man, like, comic number one, Iron Man. And I know that that, <clears throat> she was supposed to have a name that someone suggested, and I thought it was a fine name, I just don't remember what it was. <clears throat> Famous INTJs you know. Personally, uh, I don't know any famous INTJs, personally. Uh, ones that I might know about. Maybe Elon Musk? Possibly. Possibly. Uh, mo a lot of INTJs that would be in quote famous are going to be, you know, up there in um, government agencies most likely. <clears throat> As an ENTP, what are the types you like the least? Uh, I, I have gotten along with a number of different personality types. It's just how they try to present themselves. Usually the ones that maybe that might be more insufferable as they're younger, uh, usually it's ESFPs. Uh, they they tend to be, uh, they tend to act and behave in a specific way that bothers me, but as they get older, they mellow out and they become more, uh, far more tolerable as they get older. But I've, I've gotten along with a number of 
uh, different personalities. Uh, for example, I knew an ISTJ that would actually play Monster Hunter with me once in a while. And they didn't talk a whole lot, and they just, you know, kept things related to the game, which was fine. They didn't branch out in conversation and talk about other things, but when we're playing Monster Hunter, we focused on Monster Hunter, and I thought that was fine. And got along with them just fine. Uh, let's see. I was diagnosed, except ENTJs. I have, I have never... Yeah, obviously, understandably, I'm not going to end up spending a lot of time with ENTJs, not because I don't want to, but because they are doing other things with their life and they're not going to spend a lot of time screwing around, which is what I would be doing. I was diagnosed with ADHD as well and also suspect, I suspect I'm on the autism spectrum, although I was never tested for that. No. Everyone's on the spectrum nowadays, so that would be normal. Is there a stream or a steam urchin and a tree urchin um, given he looks like you but with different MBTIs with YouTube channels? I have no idea. I have t uh, trouble typing someone who I've initially typed as ENTP but then I realized that he has anonymous Facebook page where he posts every once in a while about life and its ups and downs. Why would an ENTP have an anonymous Facebook page? I don't know. Unless it's a bunch of, you know, anti-government stuff, in which case I can understand that anyone would want to have an anonymous page where they just post, you know, down with taxes, you know, kind of a thing. ESTP versus ENTP, can you break down the difference between the two? Yeah, an ESTP actually does productive things with their life, and the ENTP spends more time doing unproductive things with their life. That is, uh, that would be the biggest difference. He told me that he does that whenever he has intense problems going on in his life. Is he like 15 or something and going through a bad time? Um, yeah, it's, it's always possible that they could be something else. Elon Musk is an INTP, apparently. He is nowhere near structured enough to be an INTJ. Possible. I don't know the man. Uh, he shows typical signs of ENTP. He smokes, drinks, has no ability whatsoever of efficiency at work. He turns everything into a game. Um, it's hard to say. Uh, we'd, you would, uh, we'd have to learn more about him. What are your thoughts about INFPs? Which ones? Uh, males, females, ones that grew up rich, ones that grew up poor. Uh, ones that grew up with disabilities, ones that grew up fairly normal uh generally speaking infps they they come from they they they, they come from the heart you know and uh, being authentic that's what they enjoy and authentically they enjoy the perspectives of other people more or less the you know the feelings of other people getting a a moral compass about you know specific people and that's what they enjoy doing now most infps know me as a a moral well i mean some i have been inaccurately described as a psychopath i'm not a psychopath i do experience emotion i just say things that might sound psychopathic but infps i generally get along with we just we just don't talk for very long what type of climate, society, and period of time an ENTP would prefer to live in? Well, I always want to live in the future, if possible. I always want to keep moving into whatever new things are going to come out. Like, I'm always hoping that before I'm too old, that a real virtual reality system will come out, and then I'll be stuck in like a sword art online kind of situation. That would be great. Super fun. Is uh, is this another INFP appreciation stream? It is not. Uh, the ones I've been with? I suspected that my very first girlfriend in high school was an INFP. It didn't last for very long. But, I, and of course, I don't remember. That would have been 20 years ago. So. Um, in terms of just ones that I've been around or talked to you know, through voice or whatever, or, uh, they're fine. They just talk more on the feeling side of conversations, which I admit I'm not as interested in. 
Do you plan or improvise? I very rarely plan for anything. It's a very rare occurrence where I actually believe I need to create a plan for it, because in most cases I can argue my way or wiggle my way out of situations. I can come up with all kinds of reasons and excuses to do or not do things. So I don't really need to plan for much of anything. I roll with it, as they say. Die, ghoul ravager. It said it wasn't immune to sneak attack, so I guess I can keep trying that. And that didn't work. Well, if it's not immune to sneak attacks, why am I not getting sneak attacks? Hmm, it's just not working. Oh well. If you're lucky enough not to have to do too much work as either one of these two, which one would you rather? Detective. Clearly, I would rather be a detective. I would love being a detective. That would be fantastic. Showing up to murder scenes, doing my best to recreate what happened, follow up on leads, track people down. Mm. Especially if I had a partner that did all the driving. AI is more developed than known. Wouldn't it be fantastic to intrigate with it? You mean integrate? So even when you're gone, your voice lives on? Oh, yeah, kind of like an engram. Where uh, you more or less scan a copy of my, of my brain and then have it live on. Thoughts on the quote, money isn't real. In what context? Like, if I had a $20 bill in my hand, is it real? Well, it seems real. But does it have any real value? Uh, well, it has... We give things value. So, if someone believes that it has a lot of value, then it's real to that person. Uh, what MBTI is chat GPT? I would assume a, a ISTJ. If I had to pick one. All it does is uh, search for pre-established knowledge. And then tries to tell you that that's what the correct answer is. So. Are ENTPs romantic in general? In I don't I don't know what you mean by in general necessarily, but uh, you would say that no, not in general. Romantic, they can have romantic moments for sure, especially if they're, you know, let's say in love with someone. Most certainly, they can think of romantic things. I thought, even though it's listed as a comedy, I thought as a child that the Lost Boys, the original Lost Boys movie, was very romantic. I thought it was very romantic, and for a lot of reasons. But I'm not you know, flowers and chocolates kind of guy, so. What personality type would you prefer your partner to be if you were a detective? Probably an ISFJ. Probably. Can you imagine? Like, it, it's like perfect sitcom material. <laughs> an ENTP, and then what is essentially the opposite, uh, an ISFJ. But they would still be able to you know, uh, keep me in check while being a detective. I think that would be fun. What's the perfect date for an ENTP? Of course, that's a, a matter of opinion. That's an entirely subjective. I'm sure Cal would have a different idea of what a perfect date would be than I would. It was FS. I have no idea what they mean by that. Hi, Moon Globes. Are we in a simulation inside a simulation? Was that a is that a Rick and Morty reference? I do enjoy Rick and Morty. I thought it was hilarious. I also heard that the voice actor for Rick was involved in some underage children related things, which is terribly depressing because he won't be able to work as Rick anymore. Uh, awfully depressing. I wouldn't be able to watch Rick and Morty anymore unless he was doing Rick's voice. Is your first name Street? My first name is Lyle. 
L Y L E. I, I swear I've said that's like the third time I said that. Uh, does perfection ex even exist? I'm sure it does exist, just perhaps not here on this plane of reality. Now, I I'm a big fan of quantum mechanics, and you know, in quantum mechanics, it states that every possible reality should exist and is real. Just not here, somewhere else, in a, in a different reality. Possibly parallel realities. And so, does it exist? Probably, just not here. It'll exist somewhere else. See, Lost Boys was romantic. See? What MBTI types tend to think they're deep and intellectual when they're really not? Oh, it's... <laughs> What does it mean to be an, an intellectual, exactly? Just someone that's always wondering if what they're saying is true or not? Because that's that's the impression that I get about being an intellectual. It's always it's questioning what our, un our understandings are of, you know, reality or certain concepts, theories, etc. So, and that's, of course, someone that does that all the time. So what types tend to think they're deep and intellectuals when they're really not? Uh... So the the pretenders is what I like to call them. Um, if uh, which I mean, uh, there's a lot of types that can do those. It, we're talking about varying degrees. Um, you know, like I, I've met some ISTPs that, of course, uh, do believe that they think deeply all the time about you know subjects and things like that, or that they they think a lot on it. And their their version of thinking a lot is a lot for them. But maybe for someone like me, I would say, well, you're barely dipping your toe in. There's so much more to think about that if you had the preferences of functions that I had, then you would have already reached them. And then we would be, you know, further along in the discussion. But uh, I've known some, I've known an ISTJ who believed that they were. I've known INTJs who also believe that they were. Um, I've, uh, ESFPs, ISTPs, I've, I've seen a number of them. It's... It's, it's what happens when you lack that preference for perspectives. It's comparing what you do to other people and how you know, they conduct their business in life. It's when you're missing that perspective, all you have to go on is you. And if you believe that if you're thinking three hours a day on deep subjects can, can, you know, counts you as an intellectual, well, then you'll be very surprised to find that there are other people that do it for literally 12 hours a day, every day of their life. <clears throat> which, of course, is evident by the fact that they have wasted their life thinking about deep intellectual, conceptual topics without actually getting any, uh, you know, money for it or anything productive out of it. So, it's it's that lack of perspective. Let's see. Oh, a lot of questions all of a sudden. Does uh, is your first name Street? No, it's not. Does perfection even exist? Uh, I'm sure it does. I think we covered those. There are imperfections in everything. True, just not here. And in that parallel, does perfection keep progressing? If something's perfect, it doesn't need to progress anymore, right? That kind of makes sense. Is there any way I can get my best friend who is an ISFP to better get on the same page as me as an, uh, an INFJ for making art together? We share a vision, but un often are out of step in our process. What kind of art are you trying to make with another person as an INFJ? As an INFJ, I mean, is your business art? And that's how your, your company runs on art? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> uh, otherwise, if you're an INFJ, then you're really not going to care all that much about whether or not your ISFP is on the same page as you because you're going to be busy actually doing productive things with your life. So you're not going to be all that interested. Uh, what's the lore of calling yourself street urchin? My grandmother, Sandra, once told me many years ago that on my Facebook page, I looked like a street urchin. And it just came to me and I thought, well, I'm sure there's not that many people named street urchin, so I'll just go with it. And so that was that. What movie slash TV characters are typed as ENTP but are not? And what are characters, uh, what characters are ENTPs and are typed as other types? That I don't. I mean, there was there was one article I read where they said that Doctor House was an INTJ, 
and not an ENTP, which was funny because the crux of the article was trying to determine whether or not he was an INT or an ENTP or an INTJ. I thought it was laughable. I mean, you you can't possibly watch all of House and say to yourself, yeah, he could totally be an INTJ. That doesn't make any sense. You, you wouldn't be able to. If you have two functioning brain cells, you would know that House was an ENTP, not an INTJ. So that's one instance. I've always had deep interest in quantum mechanics as well, but that shouldn't surprise you coming from an ENTP. That wouldn't surprise me coming from an INTP. What is surprising is when people tell me that they enjoy quantum mechanics and they, you know, they believe in it or they, they, they're really interested in it and don't believe that there is a world with an afterlife. We're talking about quantum mechanics here where everything should be possible. Even the idea of your consciousness slipping into a different reality once it's left your body that possibility should be there, right? I mean, uh, even even just on, on that quantum level, just you, uh, you know, observing something gives it form or shape or changes how it is. And it's like, that's that's got to have power, right? That's got to go somewhere. Uh, whether or not it's your consciousness, I have no idea, but I mean, it seems possible. Uh... Uh, we ask about the MBTI of the Joker. Are you talking about Heath Ledger's Joker, which was an ENTP, or are we talking about Joaquin Phoenix Joker, which was an INFP? <laughs> One of those two. Uh, if your last name was Urchin, then you would rename your first name Street, but not Lyle. Uh, Lyle Urchin. Some people call me Lyle Urchin currently, so I, I guess it's it's whatever. Uh I don't think I would bother changing my name because that takes work and effort to, you know, change my name. Uh, vagrant, my only high friend was also an ISFP. We had very little in common, but we had lots of fun together. Yeah. Do you have examples of famous ENTPs? I always assumed that, I, I believe that Ryan Reynolds and Robert Downey Jr. were ENTPs. I always had that thought. Uh, no way someone thinks his name's Street. Yeah, no one should think that my name was actually Street. Uh, are they an INFJ? Who? Who's an INFJ? No idea. Do you have tips for impressing an ENTP boss? I'm trying to think of a situation in which an ENTP is your boss and you actually feel the need to impress them because that shouldn't be necessary but if you want to impress them I mean there's all kinds of ways you can impress an ENTP uh, coming into work not wearing clothes that you should be wearing <laughs> for example uh, let's say you work in some high class you know lawyer building somewhere uh, and a, a woman walks in you know, wearing a, you know, a sports outfit or just a, a thong or a bikini, for example, that's pretty impressive that you would actually go into such a place wearing that. That'd be pretty impressive. Uh, well, my end goal was never really to be successful in terms of what most people deem what it means to be as such, but may to find truth, uh, explore and understand the universe. Good luck. I, I hope that we do have a greater understanding of the universe in the next 40 years. Hopefully now you shall be no further questioned Tate and Lyle in UK's most popular selling sugar brand. Oh. Let's see here. Uh, once an ESTJ boss is mad at you or not doing what they asked, how do you fix it? Well, do what they ask, and then maybe do a little extra, like listen to some of their dumbass stories. That would probably help, because not everyone wants to sit and listen to them. And I'm sure that, you know, because in most cases ESTJs are males, and I'm sure that uh, most uh, women that are married to ESTJ males don't always want to hear about their stories, so if you can, you know, sit and listen to them, it'll be a nice change of pace. What which type do you think Nikola Tesla was? I was told that he was an ENTP, but I don't really know anything about Nikola Tesla. Uh, he was the one that said you will 
see man-made horrors beyond comprehension or something. You will live to see man-made horrors beyond your comprehension. Because he was correct on that. So uh, that was pretty neat. That's about all I know of Nikola Tesla other than, you know, the Tesla coil thing. Um, I don't think ENTPs want to be bosses or managers. What do you think? For, yeah, uh, I, I would rather not be people's bosses if I didn't have to. And if I was going to be the boss, it would be of like a very small group of people. Uh, I would rather, because that means I always have to come up with the stuff and I don't get to see what other people's perspectives are. I have to be making the decision, which, mean, which means it's always placed on me, which means that I need to take an inordinate amount of time to make a decision. And uh, that can get frustrating at times. Now, I do agree with you that Dr. House is an EMT. Yes. What was that? I have no idea what that was. Let's see here. Uh, I do not agree with you that, Redman, uh, that Red Reddington is an ESTJ. Red Reddington is too abstract to be an... <laughs> he's too abstract. <laughs> okay, so uh, all he, uh, Raymond Reddington does is tell people stories. That's his whole shtick is telling people stories, loving to tell people stories, getting to know people, getting to know their perspectives. That's his whole thing. That's what makes his character. ENTJs do not do that. As a matter of fact, we're looking at a preference for both introverted sensing and extroverted intuition, period. He is not an ENTJ. There is no way in hell that he's an ENTJ. Uh, ENTSFP is Lyle Andrew Urchin. Yeah. The, that ENTP is very influent and can get you promoted. How to impress them? Clothing won't work. Why won't clothing work to impress them? Do things that, you know, you're not supposed to do. Take risks. You know, to take, take risks. That'll impress them. Whether or not they can save you from the risks you take, that's, you know... They, uh, be open about the things you believe, perhaps. Say things that are controversial. Say things that are not politically correct. Those will those, those will impress them as well. Once again, I don't know if they'll be able to save you and help you out, but it'll impress them. Do ENTPs come installed with an evil laugh, or is that DLC? It's probably DLC. What you would picture Lyle Tate Andrew physically in real life? Uh, somebody less pale than myself, most certainly. Uh, Saturday, I live the, the days of the week differently. Mm -hmm. Okay. Street urchin, a ghost. Uh, unless ghosts need to eat. All of a sudden, then no. That reminds me that I did quite a clan in which was run by an ESTJ from a video game that I play, and he got so pissed that five years later he still has me blocked. Now, they probably forgot you existed, so they may, may keep you blocked there. <clears throat> That must be a Lyle Tate hacking your audio with air horns. Yeah, I have no idea where those air horns came from. It seemed like maybe somebody jumped into the Discord just to blast the air horns real quick and then leave. And I wouldn't have been able to tell because I turned off the sound notifications. So I can't hear when someone jumps in. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> As hell has been mentioned in this devil ENTP, yes, I know there are many definitions of the devil. I've been called the devil on like five different occasions now. Uh, someone just said that I was the devil. I was flattering. Have you ever studied theology? Not seriously uh, when it comes to mythologies, though. Yeah, I've, I have jumped into that. I was more interested in it in high school. Uh, no, uh, Raymond Reddington has all, has virtually all the earmarks of being an ESTJ, uh, especially the part where <clears throat> he 
Well, it, it, he, he's a weird character because he's not actually Raymond Reddington, right? Like, he was someone that took on the identity of Raymond Reddington. And uh, it's, he's a very, very strange creature. Does Lyle Andrew exist? I'm sure there's a Lyle Andrew out there somewhere. <clears throat> You're back to normality now. Great. But yes, uh, Raymond Reddington is all about his stories and rummaging up the past and always being he always adhering to whatever his original goal was or whatever he was told to do for your information that ENTP has strong views about clothing and is ready to debate why would they have strong views about clothing why would an ENTP care <laughs> If you come in gym pants, that ENTP will send you right away to a client to make his point. I'm kind of thinking that that person may not be an ENTP. Maybe an ESTJ. <clears throat> I suspect Lucifer and Prometheus are the same person and are both ENTP. Yeah, they... I, I get the idea of uh, an ENTP wanting to go against the grain and you know uh god saying you need to do this and act this certain way and then an entp saying no no i'm, I'm not doing that i'm going to do what i think is a, a better idea i can understand that at the same time he uh lucifer tried to overthrow god right which seemed more of an entj thing to, to do so it uh unfortunately i wasn't there so i have very little information on what actually happened I still want to know who blew air horns into my stream. I bet it was Ven. She's mean. Have you ever found yourself on MBTI overload and burnt out from thinking about it, but couldn't shut that part of your brain off? I can't ever shut that part of my brain off. It's everything now. Uh, when someone, you know, I'll, I'll be talking to someone and they say something to me and be like, okay, it's because they preference these functions. So, duh, that's why they crap. That's why they said what they said. Kind of a thing. So, yeah, I can't turn it off. Uh, sometimes it gets annoying when uh, people are frequently asking me uh, about certain hypotheticals involving personality types. It... MBTI does not give you that high resolution view that comes more from your personal experience with that person because like I, I I would tell people that some of the most varied personality types from person to person are introverted sensors because their life is how they were brought up. A someone that grows up on the West Coast, an introverted sensor, is going to have a much different view of life and, and what they do and how they behave in it versus someone that was born on the East Coast. Their their lives are gonna be a lot different. Because it's all about how they grew up the culture that they were born into. Uh, no, a ESTJ would yell but never risk sending you to a client in gym pants. Uh, some, yeah, ESTJs don't yell very much. Uh, not from my uh, experience, anyway. I don't ever, I don't really catch them yelling. Uh, that would require a great deal of personal feeling, which an ESTJ is lower on that. It was an ENTP that blew the horn, probably. Who would love to see a Tate Lyle debate? What would that? I, I don't know what we would have to debate about. <laughs> Wouldn't it be him talking about how men should act? And I'd be like, yeah, no, I can understand that point of view. Uh, if you want men to be a certain way, then you're going to tell them these things. We could debate about, uh, you know, whether or not whether or not Elden Ring should have gotten Game of the Year. We could we could debate on that. <laughs> Would I, I? I couldn't. I couldn't go bald. I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> uh, one time I went to was Supercuts, and the lady asked me how short I wanted my hair, and I was thinking. I, I said to her I, about three, 
and I, I put my you know fingers apart like this. I'm like you know about three, roughly, and she took that as like three centimeters, and so I wasn't paying attention, and all of a sudden you know I'm sitting in the chair and I hear bzzz, and then I'm like what why why is she getting the buzzer? Hair's gone, and obviously at that point. You have no choice but to, of course, have that same length of hair around. So for about a solid uh, about a solid month, I was not wanting to go outside or interact with anyone in person because my hair was gone, essentially. Uh, can you give sh a short description of general ISFP motives? Generally speaking, ISFPs are looking for happiness, or whatever constitutes happiness, and personally I believe that's just general contentment. Uh, usually an ISFP wants to have a partner, uh, someone that they can love, someone that can you know love them, uh, make sure that their physical needs are taken care of, and just be happy. That's generally what their motives are. They, they have a vision for what happiness is. That comes from introverted intuition in the third position. So they have an idea of what that should look like. Whether or not they hardcore focus on getting it, generally speaking, no. They just, they know what it is. And that's what leads them oftentimes to depression. The most depressed people I have met in regards to MBTI over the past 10 years have been ISTPs and ISFPs. Now you would think, well, wouldn't the INFPs be the most depressed? Not always, not in all situations. And when they are depressed, it's mostly males. But for male or female, ISTPs and ISFPs end up being the most depressed because they can they, they have that vision for what their life needs to be or what they want it to be. They just don't always get there. And they're plagued by that vision that they're, you know, what their life is currently is not what they wanted their life to be. And that causes depression. So, yeah, I, I edit my own videos. I haven't made... Uh, any videos as of late uh, I've mostly just been you know working on making sure that the live streams are you know becoming more of a regular thing lately and so I've been mostly working that but yes all the previous videos you see uh, that you you see on my channel are edited by me recorded and edited and posted by me if you are bald would you look more like Jeff Bezos or Megamind I don't think my skin would turn blue, so probably not Megamind. Assuming that I'm talking about the same person here. As for Jeff Bezos, uh, I, I guess I'd be closer to Jeff Bezos. We have roughly the same skin tone. So, why do people claim to not be emotional because they don't cry, but they have outbursts of anger? Is anger not an emotion? Of course, anger is an emotion. Telling someone that they're emotional has a negative connotation. Being emotional means that you experience the range of emotions and you express them. You don't have to consciously be expressing them. Uh, most people notice when you're being emotional or not. Uh, you don't have to say, oh, I'm angry about this or I'm sad about this. Being pessimistic or uh, being passive aggressive or being more depressed sounding can express your emotions. Those are expressing your emotions. You don't have to just tell people, oh, yeah, I'm happy or I'm sad or I'm joyful or hated, you know, uh, hateful to something that you can express emotions all the time. It's whether or not you notice that you're expressing them, which is why extroverted feelers are usually really good about maintaining emotional neutrality uh, when talking with others. They are, they are aware that other people express their emotions all the time, and that gives away, you know, certain context clues to what's going on in their mind. And extroverted feelers tend to try to keep that as private as possible. Hair trauma. Not a lot of follicle fun. I agree. Who is in least need of relationship and reproduction? Ah, everybody needs to reproduce. Mutations happen. I, I, it's actually very interesting if, you know, over these past, let's say, thousands of years, uh, to, to see how society tends to correct itself on uh, percentage population of certain types um, with certain cognitive function preferences we always seem to have a large proportion of introverted sensors that's introverted sensing in the first or second position we seem to have that and we're always going to have that as a matter of fact it seems like it's going up and i imagine it will continue to rise for 
we're on the upswing for introverted sensing at the moment. Can ISFPs ever let go of their exes out of their life? They can. Doesn't mean they always do. I have known at least three ISFPs that kept their exes in their life, even after, you know, after a, a split. So, there is that. Uh, all are welcome to come on another impromptu adventure of my neighborhood. Oh, are you streaming in the Discord or something and showing off? Uh, you live in, you don't live in London. I, you live somewhere close to it, I think. Would you shave off your eyebrows or head hair given they would be permanent? No. Goodness, no. I would never shave off my eyebrows or head hair. <laughs> Will there be a stream tomorrow as well? If a lot of people want me to stream again tomorrow, then yeah, sure, I'll do it. I don't mind. Doesn't bother me any. Probably need to do it more often, to be honest. I thought about doing a podcast thing, but that's where you got to be, you know, on stream every day. We'd probably do it for like two hours every day, and we'd have to come up with a whole bunch of topics to actually discuss. And then, of course, do, you know, maybe an MM, er, AMA session towards the end of it. Emotions are logical if you have clarity of thinking. Well, I, I don't think emotions are inherently logical. I think that's what makes them emotions. Uh, you can analyze them logically. You can analyze the emotions and articulate what you're experiencing. That's logical. But the emotions themselves, I don't suspect, are logical. If the rain makes me happy. Okay. I, I can logically tell you why it makes me happy. Maybe it's it's soothing to me. Perhaps I grew up in in times where it rained a lot and I was happier. Therefore, in my old age, now I'm soothed by the sound of rain. I can rationalize why that makes me happy, but being happy... It's not necessarily logical. Uh, now, which introverted NT is more emotional? The INTJ or the INTP? That would be the INTJ is going to express their emotions more often than an INTP. Usually by a lot. Emotions aren't real. You can't make believe. Uh, let's see here. What's my day job? Taking care of older folks. That's my day job. I have to get ready for work now. Oh, that's sad. I appreciate you answering my questions, of course. And you, which, by the way, if you have questions for me, you can go to my Discord and you just at at Street Urchin, and I will get around to it eventually. Well, sadly, I couldn't get in the university that I initially wanted, and I had this idea where I wanted to move out and live independently and have a whole different life than I have now. Well, I hope that you do get that. You may have to move to a different country, depending on where you're at. Have you annoyed people when you speak? Absolutely. I have annoyed people when I speak, usually in my younger years. I don't speak as much as I used to because I understand that it, when you get used to people constantly telling you things that you could rationalize or explain away, and you realize that when you do it, I mean, it, it upsets them, you start to just stop caring after a while. Now, mind you, I'm 35 years old, and so I've had many, many years of listening to people and and then trying to help them which i thought was helping them but realistically all they wanted to do was complain about something and you know after so many years of realizing that uh you just start to ignore and or turn it off that's why when i talk to people i try to have something else going on so i can safely ignore them and then you know do something else so i don't have to interject what i think at them Let's see. I am mainly talking about people making trespasses against you. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Uh, hope your day of work is well rewarded. I'm sure it won't be. Quickest way to spot an ENTP pretender. As soon as they start talking about personal opinions about things. Like, that's... 
usually uh, someone will tell me they're an ENTP and then I'll be like, oh, that's cool. And then they'll start telling me about how they feel about things, like essentially their personal opinions. Oh, I don't like this or I don't like that. Okay. Uh, thank you for your consideration. Uh, so there's that um, ENTP pretenders. Oh, I've had some ENTPs tell me that they are, well, not ENTPs, they, they, they weren't ENTPs. I've had <clears throat> people tell me they're ENTPs, but their pastimes include very physical, traditional activities. I'm like, that's weird when we live in a world with computers and endless adventures and fantasy worlds to get into and learn the lores of and <clears throat> things like that. And so telling me that you would prefer to stay away from technology and the like to instead indulge in physical pleasures. And like, uh, I'm not familiar with an ENTP that would do that. As a matter of fact, it's, it's the opposite of extroverted intuition in the lead position. Um, so there's, there's that ENTPs are nerds. They're, they're just generally speaking, charming nerds. That, that's probably the simplest way to put it. At least that is consistent with my analysis. Both I and my INTJ partner and my INTJ dad had a lot more emotion emotional than me. And both get frustrated and e angry, uh, angry easily. Yes, INTJs uh, tend to explode with uh, frustration, irritation, and anger more often than many of the other personalities. I'm not saying they're emotional people uh, by any means. I'm simply saying that they have more of those outbursts than than some others. Let's see here. That's right, I got instant killed by the that thing. Uh, run away. Why can it see me? Let's see. Still casted that death magic on me. It's a Bodak. Got it. So this is a bad situation because I need to wear the belt that makes me immune to fear, but the Bodak will cast some instant death magic on me and I would need to use the belt that makes me immune to that. He's gonna do it again to me. Yeah. This is all Ven's fault. I'm an ENTP and I love knitting, painting, biking, and taking long walks through nature. I... that's cool uh, that you do that. I would say that if you're doing that a lot, then you're probably not an ENTP. There are way more, far more interesting things for an ENTP to do in life. And that's usually what they focus on because that's their preference for living, especially in the lead position. By the time you're 15, you're already sick of the physical, you know, like just going out into nature and doing those things. Now, now of course, having physical relations with people, that's more practicing your extroverted feeling and your ability to manipulate people. But as for the knitting, sewing, things like that's super boring. You would be done with that rather immediately. But saying that you love doing something and actually doing it to prove that you love doing something, those are two different things. A lot of people get that confused. Um, so, uh, for example, I could say, I love drawing. Well, how much do I love it? Well, I, the last time I drew something was maybe, you know, six months ago. Well, do you really love it if you're, you know, you haven't been doing it for the past six months? Well, you would say, realistically, probably not. Now, what I absolutely love doing is being at my machine and trying to find something new and interesting on it. Because, of course, you, I'm connected to the internet, therefore I have access to so much. You know, and this seemingly never-ending amount of information or new perspectives to look at, etc. And so I'm going to spend most of my time there because I love, you know, experiencing those new conceptual things. Uh, those abstract, you know, fantasies, adventures... Etc. Etc. And so I love doing it. Therefore, I'm at my machine a lot.
uh, guess my type based on my limited presence in the live. Um, are, are you a troll that like to ask me about random hypotheticals regarding my physical abilities to subdue and or incapacitate uh, fictional characters? <laughs> I think she she just made a joke because it was in quote. Oh, if it was a joke, then yes, that was a good joke. Bro really said blah 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 blah. Yeah, blah 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 blah. The clear net is only the tip of the internet iceberg. Whatever that is. What's the clear net? Tell me more. What is by far the most common and annoying question you've been asked over your time on YouTube? What type am I? That's the most annoying question I've been asked <laughs> over the past 10 years. <laughs> what type am I? Ah. <sighs> Uh, it's the most annoying because I tell people, here are the cognitive functions, and if you can actually be unbiased and take a look at your whole life as best you can, even especially the negative ones, you should be able to come up with what your own type is. Just read the cognitive functions and, you know, do that. And, and if they ask for help, like, okay, well, I, I prefer to do this activity, what, you know, what cognitive function would that be primarily used for? And then, of course, you would ask questions, and then we would, you know, dive deeper into it. But... People coming to me and just asking me, what is my type? I'm trying, some people don't understand what, if I'm trying, if I'm giving you a type, I am telling you what your internal workings are like. That means I'm knowing your, I, I'm understanding the psychology of who you are. And I should be able to accurately predict what you do next. Do you want me to tell you that? Or would you rather find out for yourself? Going on tour. Yeah, I, I do have the tour browser on my machine, as as most e every ENTP should have the tour browser on their machine. Just guess any of the 16 types. I amend. Yes, I'm making hypothetical death battles with your real abilities. Uh, well, you're you're talking about the physical, of course. So. I get the impression that you might be an extroverted sensing preference person. Best to take the actual MBTI and get an interview by an expert. You could do that as well. You can uh I consider myself an expert and therefore, you know, you should come to me and give me $20 for a 1 hour typing. Hambo's the, de the developer because you've been recommended to be here. Accept the invitation or keep on searching. What? Huh. How do you know Ven? Have you met in person? I have not met Ven in person. She is one of my assistants. She was very interested in MBTI, wanted to learn from me. She thought that I was remotely tolerable to be around, therefore uh, she became invested in this. So, that's how I know Ven. Most of the people on my Discord I have met through the interwebs. I uh, I had my my INTP friend of 20 years actually joined the Discord just to bother me one particular morning. And I2P too for all those juicy DDoS attacks. Yeah, of course. The Tor browser can lead you to a great many mysteries to figure out. I once I, I once believed that a missing girl that was later found murdered in a cornfield was due to uh, the shadowy overlords conducting one of their rituals to sacrifice someone for a uh, Halloween, like a, a super... Oh, was not, not Halloween, I don't think. It might have been around Halloween. The... Uh, super super blood moon or what have you and it, there just happened to be way too many important government officials 
around the area at that time where she went missing. And so I figured uh, she was murdered through a ritual sacrifice and it was blamed on a migrant who worked at a dairy farm. What was her name? Molly Tibbetts. That was her name. That's what I, I was... I had that conspiracy theory rattling around for a while. What's the most likely type of hackers? Anyone that has an interest in doing it, I suppose. But that probably wouldn't be your ISTJ. It would probably be INTPs, actually, if I had to really uh, put, a, put a type to it. I would say INTPs are the ones that would waste a great deal of time uh, learning to do that. And then, of course, bother people because reasons. I might look like a troll, but I'm only here to match you with hypothetical enemies like a Mortal Kombat match. Especially curious if you would do anything with sea urchins or debating the enemies. Well, I, I uh, believe it or not, I have been in physical confrontations with people. Usually over things that I've said. And usually in the heat of a fight, most people don't want to talk. Now, I have said things to taunt them to get people to do things out of anger, which might have given me an advantage, but outside of that, no, no one wants to debate in the middle of a fist fight. Those who know, know for an ENTP is your ultimate power and knowledge. Knowledge is power, and I think that's everyone's ultimate power. The more you know, the greater understanding you have of the situation, the greater the, the plans or tactical awareness you can have. Actual knowledge, by the way, not just what you might read in a book, but to go out there and find it for yourself. To know for sure that what you know is correct. That kind of stuff. But yes, knowledge is power. No, 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 no. I successfully saved. Lucked out. Now I'm immune to your death magic, nerd. Haha! -ha. <clears throat> do you win the? Do you uh, did you win the fist fights and confrontations with your fists, or your debating? I have won some fist fights. Yes, I have what I consider to have lost fist fights, and that I received more damage than my opponent. Usually, they were much bigger than me. Um, as for my debating, I don't... I mean, I have debated a lot. It, the, the problem with winning a debate is that it doesn't come with a lot of rewards. Oftentimes, when you're debating normal people, usually you just end up burning bridges when you win a debate. And it's like, well, did I really win at the end? Sure, was my logic sound, was theirs all over the place or incoherent? Sure, that would consider me the victor, but at the same time, you know, you lose and stuff, so. I would argue that ENTPs often pretend to have strong opinions just to see how people react to them. Oh yeah, I have said all kinds of things just to get a rise out of people. Um, do it all the time, still. I love making jokes about how uh, women need to be in the kitchen. That usually gets a rise out of somebody. <laughs> Why would an ENTP want to engage in a physical fight? Uh, let's say someone that the ENTP really cared about was going to be in physical harm because someone wanted to cause physical harm to them. An ENTP would probably want to get engaged in a fight because they want to prevent the other, you know, someone from being harmed. So they could do that. Now, granted, as an ENTP, I have no, I, I'm not 15 anymore, right? I'm not in my, I'm not in my teens where I just think to myself, oh, I can just predict what someone's going to do. Therefore, I should be able to just walk up and expertly, you know, maneuver, outmaneuver and dodge what they're going to do and then hurt them back. And then they fall on the ground and then, you know, everyone claps. That's not real life. So if I were to engage physically with someone, and someone's life was on the line. Uh, make no mistake that honor has very little place for me <laughs> at my age. Um, 
in that confrontation. That would, if I had, if someone I knew was going to be physically harmed to a great degree and it was something, you know, like they weren't having some, you know, one-on-one -on -one fist fight out, you know, outside the bar. It was just someone being attacked that I cared about especially. Make no mistake, I would pick up the nearest object. And now granted, I'm not super great, let's say physically, you know, I'm not someone that's very preferenced in being, you know, physical. I am very sneaky because I grew up in a house with a mother who enjoyed tormenting me, both physically and psychologically. So I did my best to learn how to be sneaky so that I wouldn't make sounds. I would absolutely sneak up on that person, hit them on the back of the head with a rock or pick up a, a tire iron, a stick, a, a big branch. I would, I would make sure that if I was going to do something about it, it would be done correctly. <laughs> And I would make sure that the incident would stop. So I wouldn't just, you know, tap on the person's shoulder and say, hey, you stop being mean to this person or I care about that person. You're not allowed to hurt them. No, 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 no. It would be rock back of the head. And then maybe I would call an ambulance if I believed that it was necessary. Uh, there's a difference between white hat hackers and black hat hackers. They're still hackers, but for different modus operandi. Okay. You said earlier you can't be bald. I thought ENTPs don't like saying they can't. Uh, I know. I personally, I, I couldn't. I couldn't go bald. I can't. I can't. Can't do it. It would. It would hurt too much. My hair is the source of my power. Much like what was it, was it was it Samson who had like the beard, and as long as he had his beard or something, the he kept his in, incredible strength. Something like that. Uh, MBTI of Julian Assange wiki links. I have no idea what his personality type is i'd have to i'd have to look into that are the people you physically fought physically stronger than you have you won physically as in knock out someone yes i i have hurt someone to the point where i don't know if you would necessarily say that they were unconscious but they were you know in a daze where it seemed like they were drifting in and out of consciousness i have been in those situations um and generally speaking most people are physically stronger than me uh, unless they're significantly younger than me for whatever reason but i don't get into fights with kids so um, i would as i just make the assumption that most people are physically stronger than i am now whether or not that's true i i, I don't always know but i would just i make the assumption because usually people that want to engage me in a physical confrontation are people that wanted to get into a physical confrontation and usually those people are more physically engaged in their life so i just i make the assumption have you ever had an embarrassing moment in your time in youtube yeah uh when i started up my channel and then my friends and family wanted to see what i was doing because they don't care about mbti so that was a little bit embarrassing uh if a war with russia started tomorrow and you had to enlist would you or would you wiggle your way out somehow i can always wiggle my way out of anything however if it was me or one of my family members that needed to be drafted i would volunteer in their place so that they didn't have to and then i would be one of the worst soldiers ever not because i couldn't you know fight the enemy but because i wouldn't listen to orders <laughs> Uh, did your parents torment you by fist fighting you because you annoyed them with your ENTP speech? Uh, no, my parents got divorced when I was four, so it was just me and my mother, and she just didn't, she, she was very traditional on discipline, if you catch my meaning. Can we discuss unhealthy types? We can discuss unhealthy types. Any, uh, I, I don't know which types are inherently unhealthy. <laughs> I don't know what you mean by that, but... Are you saying, like, which types, how they behave when they are unhealthy? Because, in my opinion, most people in the United States are unhealthy. We live in a, a terrible time, and people are not going to act in the most healthy of ways, typically. So, but we, we evolve, we adapt, we normalize. Rock, paper, scissors, all can be used, depends on the moment and the ability. Sure. If you are bald, would you use your head as a rock to headbutt people to knock them out? No, I would not. Uh, out of everything about my body, I want to keep my brain as intact as possible. <laughs> I kind of need it. Strategic negotiations first, then when all negotiation fails, it gets physical. You should always try to be diplomatic, but you should always assume that diplomacy is going to fail. So try, but always make sure you have a plan for when it does fail. Because most of the time it does. 
Not all the time, just most of the time. So uh, what what types do we want to consider uh, as unhealthy? And then discuss what that looks like. Narcissus. I'll wait. <laughs> we talk about unhealthy ISTJs. They usually end up in prison. Uh, if that if that helps, they they typically end up in prison. So ISTJs are a personality type that requires programming. They require programming. If they don't get the programming, then they do their best to find their own programming and what going off of whatever maybe stimulates them the most or whatever seems most exciting or whatever gets them the most benefit for whatever it is that they've got going on. So uh, <clears throat> an ISTJ that, let's say, grows up in the Midwest, you know, Midwest, uh, a lot of they do a lot of barbecues and, uh, you know, a lot of community related activities. So an ISTJ that grows up there is I, maybe you could consider to be healthy. But an ISTJ that grows up in, let's say, Central California, drugs, alcohol, gang-related violence, shootings, stabbings, drug running, I mean, just... If they grow up in that environment, that's what they know to be normal. Now, it, it, dude, is that healthy? Is that unhealthy behavior? I couldn't really tell you. That's a matter of opinion. But they're just doing their best to live given their situations, given what they know. What's your take on MBTI shadow function example? The shadow of an ENTP is the INTJ. When it comes to... Uh, no one no one just transforms into their shadow functions. Like that... Well, we, we, I was talking about that not too long ago, actually. You don't just transform. You don't just all of a sudden become the shadow. That's ridiculous <laughs> to think. <clears throat> uh, when people are stressed out, when animals are stressed out, they go to what's most comfortable, what's most familiar. And that kind of a thing. Um, so, when it comes to the shadow functions, I have seen far too much inconsistency with how people use those shadow functions. I have seen way too much. I just, it, it, it's almost as if how they were brought up in their current life situations determine which preferences they're going to have for those extra functions, you know, the extra four, it seems like. I have known some ENFPs, for example, uh, really try to jump on the extroverted feeling bandwagon when, when it's appropriate, and then I have seen some that just don't give a shit. And they're not into it at all and of course their lives were entirely different you grew up in different parts of the world and uh, had different families different uh, upbringings it just completely different so it seemed to me that the most consistent thing i could say about shadow functions is that it depends on how your life has been that determines whether or not you've uh, exercised those functions a little bit more than than others let's see uh, but as for an ENTP just becoming an INTJ, that's ridiculous. That's not... <laughs> that's a completely different lifestyle. <laughs> completely different. And all of a sudden... And having a preference for those different functions out of nowhere is insane. That's not something they do. There we go. Rome wasn't built in a day. It could have been. Just needed some better technology. Let's see. Uh, usually I've heard that being an unhealthy type, take any type in consideration, they have unhealthy approach to their cognitive function. I just want to know if that's true. And if it Being unhealthy is a matter of opinion. I don't know what it means objectively as to what unhealthy is. You'd have to set some objective criteria to determine what is healthy and what is, you know, what isn't. Earn a hundred billion dollars now and be bald. Well, being bald for how long? Do I only have to be bald for like five minutes? Then yeah, sure. I wouldn't have a problem with that. Uh, so yes, if you can tell me what is objectively unhealthy, then I can tell you 
uh, which ones might behave in those certain circumstances. Like, uh, it, once again, like, well, yeah, an unhealthy ESFP, uh, I would assume, if we're talking about what unhealthy is, doesn't care about their future. It's all about the, the personal, physical delights in the moment. And so that could be, uh, you know, overeating or drinking too much, doing too many drugs, uh, too much, uh, well, I don't know if there's such a thing as too much sex, but, you know, maybe having relations with, you know, a great many different partners just for the, the thrill of being with someone different. Maybe that's considered unhealthy. I don't, I don't really know. But as far as I know, most people behave in roughly the same manners all throughout their life. Like, they don't change that much unless they get into a bad car accident, get kicked in the head by a donkey, or do so much, you know, do drugs to the, you know, or take medications and to which it permanently alters their brain chemistry. In which case, yeah, sure, they can change, but uh, even if you took, let's say, an ESFP and then they did something, you know, some medical mystery or miracle in which they all of a sudden became an ISTP overnight, they're still not going to behave like an ISTP of the same age. They have to now practice and preference those functions, and so they can pick up all the, the tips and tricks that in a regular ISTP would have gained on the way there. So, it's, um, as for being unhealthy, I don't, I don't, I just don't know what that means, to be unhealthy. But if you can figure it out, you can let me know, and we can talk about it. Like on the Discord, for example. Let's see here. Uh, when an ENTP is, you know, unhealthy, which I would consume, I, I, not consume, what am I saying? If, if I were to be considered unhealthy, I've been unhealthy since I was 17. And you learn to suppress the bad, try and take in the good, and hope that you drank enough that night to not lay up awake in bed wondering about all the terrible, awful things that have you have done in your life. If you're lucky. But I still put on a, you know, I put on a face, I put on a persona, I, I come out and I pretend to be happy <laughs> and pretend that nothing ever bothers me ever. You know, stay at maximum chill. So, an unhealthy ENTP, I assume you wouldn't tell the difference between a, an unhealthy or a, you know, to, to a healthy one. And I imagine it's not going to look a whole lot different. Maybe they don't want to go outside as much, possibly. Well, that, that indicates more depression than it does being, you know, in quote, unhealthy. So, there's that. Is anyone... Oh, I think... I think my assistant's gone. Harley disappeared. I recommend Basil Hayden Bourbon. Okay. Sounds funny. Let's see. I have this new friend whom is an ENTP, and we so far have been having great conversations. Yeah, that's great. Uh, lately, I've been talking to uh, an ENFP and an ISFP. We have uh, great conversations as well. Let's see. Uh, well, bye, Rachel. It was nice having you here. Do you find yourself more uncomfortable or intrigued when you see two people angrily arguing? Usually it's uncomfortable because I, I worry about what, uh, you know, maybe what other people are going to think of, you know, uh, those two people arguing, especially if it seems like it's embarrassing to have emotional outbursts in public. Like that's generally considered embarrassing. I consider it embarrassing. So... Uh, usually I get uncomfortable, try to distance myself from the situation. And it, what can be more frustrating is that these two people are probably arguing about a personal opinion. I have a different classification for arguments and debates. So uh, in, a, in a debate or a philosophical discussion, you're trying to determine what's correct. And so 
you debate uh, over that. So that may, it's a back and forth, not necessarily, you know, coming from a place of emotion. You're just trying to determine what the, you know, the truth is. So that's a debate. An argument, one person is right and the other person is wrong. That's usually what I consider an argument to be. <laughs> So if I'm having an argument with someone, it's because this person is wrong and I am right. So I don't I don't enjoy having arguments with people anymore. Well, boys will be boys, Sylvia. And uh, men typically don't talk to women unless they have a, a vested interest in certain activities. Uh, can I grow a beard or not? I, I, I probably can. Um, I, I won't, though. I'm going to uh, shave uh, as much as possible for the rest of my days. Even my grandfather of 86 still shaves. He doesn't do much else, either. mixed up. I don't know where unhealthy came from. I meant exaggeration of your cognitive functions. It's not it's not patchy. It's it's all over. It's just uh I just don't like it. My face does not do well with uh, uh irritation from facial hair. Uh exaggeration of cognitive oh, so we're, we're asking about what types exaggerate their cognitive functions more often. Uh, exaggeration being to use more than is appropriate. Uh, what do you think when you see a customer flipping out on a service worker? I think Karen. So generally speaking, uh, to flip out... Uh, I have uh, I've seen ESFPs do it, and I've seen uh, ESFJs. Well, not, maybe not flip out, flip out, but it's usually uh, high up. It's usually introverted feeling that causes the the you know the this overly angry and yelling so that everyone can hear, making a scene kind of thing. That's usually a ESFP territory. So that's normally what I think. Just someone is being overly emotional. If you met Elon Musk, what would you say? I would say, uh, can I borrow like a hundred thousand dollars and maybe I'll pay it back? Better yet, do you have a job for me? I'm good at I'm good at people. Maybe maybe I could uh, maybe he could employ me. Uh, the last time I, I believe it was an ESFJ who was complaining about a service. Uh, well, it was a, the McDonald's that was in the Walmart, and I was, of course, working at the Walmart at the time. And the uh, woman ordered her food, and the uh, worker behind the counter, I, I knew her. I don't remember her name, <laughs> um, but I'd, I'd talked to her a fair amount. And the uh, so she began to prepare this lady's food. And she didn't change her gloves. And so, of course, the Karen next to me complained, Can you change your gloves? I, I you know, yeah, you're supposed to change your gloves. And, of course, I, I looked at the woman standing next to me, and I looked back at the, the woman behind the counter, and, of course, she got irritated, obviously, took off the gloves, threw them on the ground, and then continued to make, you know, food with new gloves. And, uh... The woman next to me said, I, you know, I just don't want my food tasting like fish. And I, I leaned uh, over the counter a little bit. And I said, I usually don't mind a little fish taste in my uh, in my chicken sandwich. You know, and it's sometimes hard to tell the difference. And, uh, God, she said, uh, uh, I, I said something insulting to this woman. I, I had something to do with her sense of smell or something like that. I was like, are you sure it's just not you? <laughs> smelling the difference <laughs> uh, that of course I I, I was uh, someone talked to me about that <laughs>
afterwards because of course I was wearing my Walmart vest with my name tag on it so I don't complain to fast food workers ever if my you know the only time I, I ever go back in and say is oh hey I, I didn't get this sandwich and usually they have it there it, they just it just didn't make it to the bag and then they hand it to me no big deal but uh, I I don't complain about my food because if my food gets sent back, I'm always concerned that the person's going to send it back in a you know with something extra added onto it that I don't want. So I don't. Thank you, Ven. Ven donated nine dollars ninety nine cents. So that means she gets extra feet picks this week, which is a joke, of course, because I've never sent her a foot picture before. Let's see. Uh, no, just that. Just what would types look like when maybe their dominant function is over exaggerated, but it's okay. We don't have to discuss what it looks like when it's over exaggerated. I, I don't know if it would necessarily be over exaggerated. There are some types that do, like, let's say, uh, there's, you know, that, that, that meme, that stereotypical thing about how a, a married woman will complain to the husband about things that they did from you know, decades ago and bring it up out of nowhere, that might be an over-exaggeration of an introverted sensing usage, which usually comes from ESFJs or ISFJs. Um, so that would be something to be over-exaggerated as an example. Or uh, maybe, uh, in, you know, let's say uh, someone with a, you know, an, an INTP, for example, over-exaggerating their introverted thinking. That's when it, a good moment would be in the Sherlock Holmes movie when... Uh, when Watson's uh, fiance asked Holmes to, you know, tell her about, you know, what he noticed. And he started going off the rails with both, you know, introverted thinking and extroverted intuition. But more importantly, the introverted thinking portion of it, because he completely lacked the, the tact in conversation to more kindly explain what he was observing that's when your introverted thinking goes overboard and you stop caring about whether or not someone's going to be upset with what you're going to say next based on what you have determined. Um, that would be an exaggeration going overboard. Uh, let's see. What would, what would you react if Will Smith slapped you in the same situation? <laughs> oh, if I... Well, I've been in those situations before where I got slapped over saying something that someone didn't like to hear, and uh, usually I, I take it in stride and I giggle or laugh or laugh it off to the best of my ability and say, yeah, you know, I probably deserved it, you know, obviously because I said something that I probably knew was going to get me in trouble in one way or another. So that's normally how I do it. Now, granted, I've only ever been slapped by women, so it's not as if you know, a woman, I say something and then a woman slaps me and I go, oh, well, I gloves off, time to go to work and, you know, start pounding her face in like that doesn't happen, obviously. So you just, you have to take it because if you, <clears throat> you get slapped, but then you, let's say, punch a woman for slapping you, well, one of you is going to end up in chains that night and it's not going to be her. <laughs> Should MBTI taught MBTI be taught in schools? Do you think it ever will be? Um, no, I don't think it should be taught in schools because most people wouldn't be able to properly understand it or explain it. And we would just have roughly the same situations we have now regarding MBTI where 90, 90 plus percent of the population has no idea how MBTI, MBTI works and they just kind of assign types to people arbitrarily. <clears throat> so it wouldn't be particularly helpful. You would need a someone who's specialized. You would have to have an MBTI class with someone who's specialized in it and, of course, has dealt with it for many, many years to teach people. And it should be an elective, not something that should absolutely be taught everywhere. It'd be an elective. You can choose to join that class if you want. <clears throat> and yes, don't forget to join the Discord. You can be typed by Urchin. That is true i still do those things as a matter of fact i haven't uh i was told that i had appointments this week and i don't know when they're supposed to be <laughs> so i have to check that <clears throat> oh, let's see what i got for that a light crossbow plus two garbage and some gold 
that I didn't need. Perfect. Let's see, Shadok types uh, an X. I'm not sure what that was about. Well, let's see, what else? Uh, Over-exaggerations of uh, functions. Uh, a clear over-exaggeration is when someone is using too much extroverted intuition and not focusing on what's going on in their life. That would be an over-exaggeration. Do you type in video meeting or just by messaging? Uh, we usually just do it by call voice chat. I mean, I I can turn on my camera if that would make the person more comfortable, but I haven't had to do that yet. So, But by voice, uh, hearing hesitations, inflections. The problem with doing it through messaging is that when someone's trying to get a specific type out of me, they may try to look up things. So if I ask them a specific question about what their interests would be, like if they're faking having an interest in something, they may all of a sudden stop typing and then five minutes later they give me, you know, the answers. And that there's too much doubt there to believe that this is stuff that's coming off the top of their head. It, it's more something they had to go look up first so that they could pretend to have an interest in whatever topic they claim to have an interest in. Um, so, uh, definitely do, we do all my typings over voice chat. I want your candid answers, not answers that you have the time to think of before saying them. I want to know how your mind works. I want to know where it goes, what it preferences thinking of. And that's what I want to know. And get a lot of pretenders. Hmm. Gotta hate this chapter. Hmm. Okay. Heal me, nerd. Thoughts on Dave Ramsey. Who's Dave Ramsey? Why does that sound so familiar? Let's find out. We got dark. Dave Ramsey. I have no idea who that is. Sounds familiar, though. What's Dave Ramsey all about? Tell me. The finance guy? Mm -hmm. There's uh, usually I, I have either Ven or Harley. Harley said she had a phone call, and so she has disappeared forever, is my guess. But, uh, yes, Ven and Harley, typically. Uh, I, I invited another person on today, but uh, she only had a short period of time to really be on, so don't think that would have been wise for her to stay up any longer. Yes, she turned into a ghost. That apparently happens. What is wrong with my character? Oh, he's overweight. That'll slow you down. Where's my belt? There you are. Shazam. How would you react is you shaved your head bald for a valid reason like giving away your hair for charity? Well, I probably would still be a little bit sad or depressed over having my hair gone, but it probably wouldn't bother me a whole lot these days. Thoughts on psychologists regarding MBTI as pseudoscience? Yes. So anyone who actually studied MBTI to a fair degree would understand that these functions you can see in real life. They're, ob they're observable in real life. You can see when they're being used. And so there's no reason why a relatively intelligent human being would, would just denounce it as pseudoscience. That being called pseudoscience 
is probably the most extroverted thinking thing regarding MBTI that I have heard. Uh, they say it's fake or it's uh, psychology or what is it horoscopes for psychology. It's that's what everyone else says. That's what that's what a lot of people say. And so they pick that up that one time and say, OK, that's what it is, because anyone that actually takes the time out to study it knows that that's not true. You just need to take a little bit of time to know that it's that it's not the case. So typically the people that say it is pseudoscience or that it's uh, astrology are pre they're, they're using their extroverted thinking on that one. Whether or not they have an extreme preference for it, that's up for debate. But it does mean that they're coming from, from extroverted thinking. They're not choosing to think about it. They're choosing to go off of what other people think about it. That's the difference between introverted and extroverted thinking. So, yes, it's measurable in real life. Uh, let's see here. Thoughts on personality disorders? Um... I actually have possibly what some might consider a hot take on borderline personality disorder. It's, I think it's fake. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's for people to have an excuse of being uh, an ass when they want to. And they say, oh, I, I, I'm, I'm borderline personality disorder. So, you know, if I act like a huge bitch, it's because I've got this problem and you shouldn't blame me for it. No, take responsibility for your behavior and learn to moderate yourself. <laughs> uh, as an example, split personality disorders are fun. Uh, that would be, I would have liked to have studied a case on person uh, on that because imagine someone that has a split personality disorder and they've had it for the past, let's say it started manifesting at like the age of five, let's say, and they're, let's say they're 20 years old now. I would really like to see how each personality preferences cognitive functions and whether or not they had the appropriate amount of experience to emulate that behavior. That would be something to see. I would be quite interested in that. Other personality disorders like alcoholism? <laughs> That's just, uh, you know, adapting to life, I think. Uh, yes, and uh, yes, the cognitive functions are easily observable in real life. Someone that wants to sit around and think about what makes sense to them, accuracy and uh, having a personal understanding, okay, well, that's introverted thinking, and if they do it a whole lot, then they have a strong preference for it. End of story. That also means that they don't have a strong preference, let's say, necessarily for extroverted thinking, because they prefer their own logic to the logic of those around them. Uh, same goes with... Uh, introverted feeling or extroverted feeling. They can either choose to go off of being authentic in what they personally feel about things in life, or they can just ride the pine and not give anybody, a, not have a particularly strong personal opinion because they don't really care. They care more about keeping people in harmony in a, in a social setting. And so that's extroverted feeling versus introverted feeling. Very noticeable things in real life. And people that say that it's just pseudoscience are, they're, they're not people that oftentimes think for themselves. Not often. So that sort of thing. Uh, I'm just kind of running around in circles now. Dun, 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 dun. I hate this chapter so much. Okay. How is FE, or extroverted feeling, weaponized in ENTPs? <clears throat> that is a good question, because how isn't it weaponized? Uh, to to uh, an ENTP, they, they, can sp they spontaneously can use it to get the things that they want. They're usually very practiced in it by the time they're, you know, let's say 20 years old. Get people to like you, therefore you can get things from those people, you can control the situations that happen, you can convince people to do things for you, 
or convince them to do things they otherwise wouldn't do, explain to them, you know, you, you can explain to them rationally in a way that they can understand. It absolutely gets used. And of course, it's in male, in males, of course, extroverted feeling is used to convince other people to have relations with them. What about claiming someone else has narcissist disorder? Uh, yes, uh, people <clears throat> people use narcissist a lot for anyone that they don't like. Oh, I, I broke up with my boyfriend because he was a narcissist. Uh, is is the big one. Like I, I always hear about someone being a narcissist. <clears throat> people don't understand what it actually means to be a narcissist. You can meet people who believe they have a great deal of self-importance. You you can. I uh, I have met a number of ESFPs, for example, that talk about how great they are and things like that. But to actually believe that one is the most important thing in their life or the lives of other people, because you can take those same people that claim to be really important and whatnot, and you talk to them really, and they'll be like, well, no, I don't actually think I'm the most important thing in my life necessarily or the lives of other people. You know, some people like me, some people don't. But to deal with someone who actually does believe that they are the most important thing in creation that's a very rare personality that's a that's that's a very rare person to deal with um and and when you do find someone that actually has a strong sense of narcissism it's going to come from someone that has a strong preference and introverted intuition they actually do believe that they are the most important thing in their life or the lives of other people they oftentimes get that impression and they grow up with it they they go they grow old believing it and that's point is that it's very rare to actually meet an actual narcissist. And, and, and that's not to say that every person with introverted intuition is a narcissist. I'm simply saying that if you were to find that true narcissism, it would be with someone that had introverted intuition as a strong preference. Are you forgetful as an ENTP? Are ENTPs predictions usually accurate? Depends on what they're talking about, I suppose. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily expect a 13-year-old ENTP to always be accurate about what it is that they're predicting. Um, and as for being forgetful, absolutely, I am consistently forgetful. Because when you're living in a world of numerous possibilities, you're not oftentimes looking back. Not often. But of course, in my old age, now, you know, when I lay in bed at night, I tend to remember things that I wish I could forget. So... What would you say is a good approach to teach other people about MBTI? A good approach is to talk about the cognitive functions and be relatable. So when you're talking about something like uh, extroverted sensing, you would say, uh, okay, this is the definition for extroverted sensing. And then I would say, well, it's manifested as this preference for what's going on immediately in front of you in real life, in reality. Uh, whether that be with raw data, you know, practical things, uh, things of a practical nature, or just general pragmatism, or having fun by doing something more physically engaging rather than something more abstract. That's extroverted sensing. And so you you explain the definition, then you would relate, you know, give them an, a, a relatable example of how that function is manifested. You do, If you can pull that off, then that person should be able to understand how MBTI works and be able to type people appropriately, or accurately. Uh, what personality type was Albert Einstein? It would seem to me that Albert Einstein was an INTP, even more so when you consider uh, what, what you read about his personal relationships with, like, his wife. <laughs> Very seemingly INTP. How can you tell if an ENTP genuinely values spending time with you versus using their FE to get what they want? You can't. That's the beauty, is that you can't. It, it would require you to also be uh, in, in ENTP, and even then, they can come up with some pretty convincing personas, to Their life, life for an ENTP is a game, and people are a part of that game. People are the pieces in that game. So you're talking about someone that loves games and loves to play games with people. 
So an experienced ENTP, you're not going to tell the difference. That's generally how they get so uh, socially successful, I suppose. I'm doing everything I can to avoid the word sex. Uh, and yeah, it's difficult because any NTP will have learned to convince themselves that it's valuable to be spending time with that person for other reasons. I, I can rationalize anything. <laughs> See what quests I haven't done yet. And there was the bounty hunt. I haven't found Yeskar yet. Whoever that is. Do ENTPs rather bully people in real life or rather bully NPCs in GTA? Um I don't I don't bully people, typically. Uh usually I can find a reason not to bully someone. Uh, people are people are valuable, and the more people that like you, the more value you have at your disposal. Uh, should kids be allowed to change their gender? Currently, no. I don't. I don't think so. Uh, eventually, I would think that we'll uh, we'll get to this. We'll get to this point in technology where you might be able to just wake up one day, take a pill or go in for some uh, very minute types of surgery and then boom, you can just change. Your, all your hormones get replaced, your bone density changes, your, the shape of your body changes. And then you could just choose to be whatever you want at that particular day and then you could just switch right back, no problem. Eventually we might get to that point. In which case, yeah, sure. What does that really matter if someone can just change? I mean, maybe we'll find some terrible effects that come from that eventually, but maybe that would be a safer option. Currently, that damage is permanent. So, uh, I wouldn't recommend it at all. Not sure if that's necessarily controversial. And, uh, uh, and if we're talking about you know, I mean, because you can't, you can't just change your gender, not currently. Uh, you, you can't just change it. You can chop something off and then make a hole that uh, doesn't go well, uh, for based on the, what I've seen. It doesn't, does, seemingly doesn't go well. Uh, just the same, you can't mold that same, you know, genitalia and then change it into floppy bits. You can't just, you, we currently don't have the technology to make that viable or sustainable or to even look appropriate so let's see so point is no children should not just tough it out maybe help them with maybe some forms of medication which i don't recommend either maybe some general therapy would help but you know do whatever you can so that when they get to 18 they can then make their own decisions with their own money mind you uh uh, say, what's the name of the game again? I'm kind of interested in it. This is Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition. You can pick it up for, last I checked, $20 on Steam. And it's it gets updated all the time. The last update allowed me to change the uh, one of the files so that I can have up to eight different classes on one character. Eight multi-classed character. Um, and so that's what I did. I changed it up to eight, and now my character named Riddick, because I was trying to make the fictional character Riddick into a D and D character. Uh, he's a uh, level. He's got rogue fighter, shadow dancer, and eventually, uh, well, more levels in weapon master because you know shivs and being good at stabby activities. Are you not single? Not sure if that's personal. Uh, I am not in a relationship currently, so I I am single. Thoughts on abortion? That's a tough one, because uh, who is to say when is an appropriate time to abort uh, the, in quote, fetus? Because we all know that eventually 
as long as everything goes normal, that fetus will be uh, something that everyone would consider to be a human baby. You know, a person with thoughts, feelings, a lot of crying, maybe some hair, you know, etc. So that's a tough one. The uh, Texas had a, a heartbeat law where as long if there's a heartbeat, then it's now a person and you can't do anything. It seems reasonable, I suppose, uh, especially under specific circumstances. Uh, but at some point, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure when that point is, at some point, it would seem to me that you are killing a, a baby at some point. Now, whether that's right or wrong, it's not up for me to decide. But at some point, to me, it would seem like you were killing a baby. So as for an exact number on abortion, um, I think that... Because it, it, it comes down to more or less a, a matter of rights. When does this fetus have legal constitutional rights? Because at some point, it, someone has to decide whether or not it's a person. And that's usually where the arguments come from. When is it an actual person with legal rights? And it's a very... It's, a, it's more or less a, a very philosophical question, which I guess... You know, some states have their ideas on when that's allowed, and other states have different ideas. Consciousness could be another random factor, another factor to consider. Yes, consciousness. When you're conscious, you are seemingly a person. Uh, do animals experience consciousness? I would assume so. Maybe not on the same level. Yeah, and so there's, there's just a lot of things to consider when it comes to abortion. Um... Most of my life, uh, as a matter of fact, I, I think I'm still now pro-abortion. Uh, not necessarily pro-abortion per se, like everyone should be having abortions all the time. I liked, <clears throat> what did someone say? S uh, safe, legal, and rare. Rare. Because you don't want to be killing off your population all the time. So they should be rare. At the very least, you shouldn't see too many of them. There's uh, all kinds of problems involved with that. And of course, there are some women out there that celebrate um, having abortions. Uh, someone made a meme about it, uh, that some woman had uh, numerous abortions, and then someone was like, that genitalia is haunted. And that's the nicest way I could phrase that meme. It was haunted. Too many dead babies. <laughs> people are cutting and harming their bodies with substances sure yeah it's, it's a very philosophical question because <clears throat> what does it mean to harm something exactly and does harm also include psychological trauma is that, does that constitute harm all kinds of things Port Last Mines, which are the north of town near the Green Griffin Inn. Oh, okay. Okay, I guess I can't turn in the other ear, or if I accidentally did through dialogue. <clears throat> Never play Arcanum? If so, did you enjoy it? I don't think I've ever played Arcanum. What's it about? I'm not familiar. I'm going the wrong way. Oof. It's hot in here. But with technology advancing to waking up one day and changing their organs and bone density is going to be a reality, but not in 2020s, probably. Yeah, I don't suspect that that's going to be anytime soon. As a matter of fact, if we can get virtual reality kind of figured out, then people could just spawn into a world being whatever gender they want to be, right? Wouldn't that be nice? How would ENFP's uh, introverted feeling shows up whenever it's a conversation that involves their that, that could involve their personal opinions? They'll choose to go that route. That's what it means to have a preference for introverted feeling. 
but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're always going to do that. May, they might be more interested in your perspective rather than, you know, talking about their own, which I have found to be more often the case, especially with people you just, you know, ENFPs you just get to know. Thoughts on welfare? It has certainly caused some harm to the country. There are some very specific situations in which welfare could be, you know, useful, like, for example, a, a, a married woman with three kids while her husband dies. And the, her husband or, you know, the committed father or whatever, he is gone. Well, they're probably going to need help, especially if they don't have close-knit family to help them out financially. So that's where, you know, welfare could be helpful, you know, for keeping the kids alive so that eventually those children can go off and, you know, become normal parts, you know, members of society. That's where it could be helpful. Now, if you are living on welfare and you have no aspirations to do anything else with your life, well, now you're just a drain on the system and you're not being very helpful. And mind you, it's not necessarily that <clears throat> it's wrong that someone's on welfare and they're not being productive. It's, it's a matter of, do people want to keep paying for you when you're choosing not to do anything with your life? <laughs> That's where you start getting into that uh, the more ethical territories because you are taking money from working people to pay for people that choose not to work and uh, decide to be on welfare instead. That's where people might have a problem with it. So welfare can be helpful. But nowadays, it's more just destructive to society. It, it doesn't help productivity. It gives people a reason to not do something better with their lives. So that's my current thoughts on, uh, on welfare. Uh, how's ENTP male different from an ENTP female? Well, they have different sexual organs. That would be uh, one noticeable difference, generally speaking. But an ENTP female is going to have the same preferences for the same functions. That's what makes someone an ENTP, is that they, they have a lead preference for extroverted intuition, followed by introverted thinking, followed by extroverted feeling, followed by introverted sensing. Uh, now, I have not met or talked to, in voice chat, an ENTP female. I have met INTP females. Um, but... Uh, I've, I've even met INTJ females, but I have not yet met an ENTP female. So, and that's 10 years of trying to find one. I've, I've met a lot of women that claim to be ENTPs, but weren't. But they should behave roughly the same, including the part about manipulating people to help them along in life, which I would suspect that an ENTP female would be extremely good at it I would think <clears throat> let's see uh, type me based on my comments as comment person you are very self-interested <clears throat> so uh, once again I'm gonna go with uh, just just uh, throwing a one out there uh, why not why not be a, a, an ESFP Why not? I don't really know. Couldn't tell you. I'd have to ask you all kinds of questions. Or at least talk to you in voice chat. One of those. And of course, if we were to do that, uh, yeah, it would cost you money. So Let's see. It's a, C, uh, it's a computer uh, role-playing game made by Troika. Fallout 1 creators set in a Tolkien-style world going through Industrial Revolution. It's one of the greatest games ever made in the RPG genre, and I think you would love it. I might... Uh, how much does it cost? Have you met Melissa Tox? She's an ENTP female. Now, I know you're joking on that one. I know that was a joke. She's obviously not an ENTP female. Now, check yourself. God, I love that. That was good. I... Uh, no, she's... She is not. I was... I... I... I suspect that she is a preferenced introverted feeler, whether in, uh, most likely in the second position. Um, most likely, anyhow, based on what I witnessed that day. Um, 
but hard to say. Uh, she could just as easily be a, an ESFP. Uh, she could have been, I mean, certainly not an introverted intuitive, like an introverted intuitive isn't going to waste that kind of time on YouTube unless it was literally making them, you know, many thousands of dollars a year. We're talking as a side project, you know, if it was pulling them in an extra $10,000 a year or something, yeah, I can see where maybe they would do that, but... Um, Right now it's three eighty nine. That's pretty. It's pretty darn cheap, I would say. I might have to give it a shot. Right after this terrible, awful playthrough of Neverwinter Nights, hmm. I also finished Armored Core six. I did all three of the um, endings for that. My cousin just finished it as well. Uh, which, by the way, if you uh, if you find you're you're getting stuck on bosses in Armored Core 6, just remember uh, dual wield shotguns and then have two uh, ice worm cannons on your shoulders. That seems to fix almost every boss fight in the game. <laughs> I did it the hard way. I did it. I, I, made a, I made an Armored Core the same way that I make Armored Cores on every Armored Core video game, which is a, a primary focus on close quarters, fast combat, you know, to uh, evade most enemy fire and then, you know, hit them with a surgical strike from behind or wait until they were vulnerable and then slap them with a laser sword or hit them with something like that. And on most boss fights, that is not, uh, that, that, that does not make them easy fights at all. And so highly recommend if you're stuck, just dual wield shotguns, put the ice worm cannons on your back and, uh, go to work. That's what I recommend. Is it harder to determine a person's type if they're young, maybe in their early 20s, or if they're 18? Typically not. No, because especially it is difficult when they're under the age of 18 here in the United States when they're, you know, I don't know what it is like in other countries necessarily, but in the United States, when they're 18, they're legally an adult and then they can do whatever they want. You know, they can just leave their parents' homes or and go anywhere that they can get to reasonably. They they essentially get to make their own decisions. And when you're typing someone for MBTI, you want to know what choices they made at those crossroads. <clears throat> it's three eighty nine. I can I can buy it myself. My goodness. But if you'd like to, uh, my Steam is Street Urchin. You should be able to find me. <laughs> And it's got my picture on there, I think, so. <clears throat> uh, I have met both an ENTP male and an ENTP female. Uh, cap! Cap. <clears throat> and they behave roughly the same, and it's a challenge to find a real ENTP female amongst females in life, but I'm actually sure I've seen one. And I correct myself, most people I meet are ISTJs, and I've probably seen some INFPs without knowing. That's likely. But, yeah, if you've... Uh, you believe you've met an ENTP female, and that's that's great. I don't think I ever have. In all my ten years of hardcore searching, I hadn't met one. But that makes sense to me because, what, I mean, first of all, where am I supposed to go looking for an ENTP female? Uh, ENTP female exactly because they are going to have greater control and influence over the opposite sex than than an ENTP male having influence over females. Um, and so they can behave in a certain manner to get more, not, not just more attention, but get more rewards from it. So where is it that I'm supposed to be, you know, looking for them exactly? I, I don't suspect that I'm always going to be finding them on, you know, for certainly not on my Discord. Um... Maybe they would be out still talking to people and uh, securing more finances, managing managing uh, their connections, we'll say. Ow. Shadow Dancer allows me to stealth in mid-combat and then stab someone in the butt. Isn't that amazing? A very Riddick thing to do, I thought. Ugh. Still attacking me. Stop it. I'm failing my rolls here. Okay. Uh, 
let's see. But yeah, it's super neat. It would be super neat to meet an ENFP or an ENTP female. But, uh... And do you know more? See, now you're telling me that you know this, this super amount of ENTPs and INTPs are supposed to be these rare personalities. And so when I hear someone... There was one instance uh, earlier on in my MBTI career where I had a woman tell me that not only was she an INFJ, but her four closest friends were INFJ. Wrong. Lies. Bad. <laughs> not, only would, not only was she not an INFJ, I was very certain that none of her friends were INFJs either. So... Thank you, Seagoyle. Seagoyle has donated approximately $4 for uh, Arcanum. That is... I guess I'd have to... Nope, that's not it. Steam? Doesn't it normally just kind of show up? I know I have to accept the gift, but uh, it's not popping up on my manage gifts. Arcanum, there we go. And he typed in a whole bunch of nonsense. Buckle up, thanks. Cool. I will begin this download. We were supposed to have gotten upgraded to a one gigabyte line, but it's still like they still cap the internet. It seems after you've downloaded so much, because I haven't I haven't seen this go up past five megabytes in like two months. I'm trying to download stuff. Anyway, oh goodness, it's warm. One second, everybody. I need to open up the door. See what we got here. Do you believe I'm an INFJ? I haven't spoken to you, so I don't know if you're an INFJ. But I'm sure once we talk, I will know. I'm just saying, I'm certain the group of ENTPs I met, some of them are ESTPs. They appear abstract, but I might see a mistake as ENTPs are usually very rare. Yes. They are very rare. Well, I mean, not not super duper, you know, INFJ or ENTJ or INTJ or ENFJ rare, but very uncommon, we'll say. As a matter of fact, they are, this, uh, last I saw, they are supposed to be uh, roughly the same frequency as uh, INTPs, or basically the same. So... I had a college class of 30 people, and every last one of us were ENTPs. Best class ever. A and then you woke up, I imagine. <laughs> uh, yes, there are... Uh, it's, it's, it's not about whether or not someone can ponder in the abstract. It's whether or not that person lives in the abstract. And when you're not very concerned about what's going on in real life, you tend to make some very poor decisions regarding real life. Very poor decisions. And so that's the the difference. Uh, some people tell, you know, they, they'll they take an online test and be like, oh yeah, I, I like to think about abstract stuff like three times a week, therefore I must be, you know, an extroverted intuitive. Or something like that. And like, no, that's not what it means to have lead preference for extroverted intuition. <laughs> but that's how they do. 
Yeah, we, we chatted on Discord, but I need to hear your voice and hear your candid responses to things. That's how I end up typing people. So, I want to hear inflections. I want to hear your uh, on-the-moment decisions of how to respond, what to say, topics to bring up, etc. When I put people on the spot, that's, that's when I find out what their personality type is. You, you know, uh, in a in short order, anyhow. And of course, anyone can get typed by going to my Discord. Discord server. And putting in an application, and I will get to you... Usually within a, a fair amount of time. I mean, I... I wouldn't have much of an issue if I were, let's say, typing five people a day. Like, that. that's not going to bother me, obviously. I like to talk, typically. Anyone for a shot of uh, Dayquil? Oh. But, yeah. And I suppose I need to do more live streams. But it's paid. What if I wouldn't want a video call? Well, it, it wouldn't. It, it wouldn't need to be a video call. I just need to talk, like you know, a phone conversation. So as long as you have a microphone uh, and you can hear my voice, then we can have a conversation. Therefore, we can, you know, I can type you. That's all. No video call is necessary. I don't need to see what you look like. Also, I invite anyone to play Neverwinter Nights with me. <laughs> Even though it's very, very old. I'm very, very old, so I guess that makes sense. Right? Uh, anyways, how long has this stream been going on? Normally I would ask my assistant, but neither one of them are here today. So. It's been almost four hours. So, any last-minute questions for the day? Just crickets? Brianna, how come you're not a part of my Discord? I will be on Discord and attempt to get typed, but I'm unable. I will attempt a conversation with a voice call, then I'm in the Discord. Yes, you just, you would have to go and make an application in the Discord, in that section for applications. How would INFJs interact with people in a workplace? Normally, typically, they're... Think of an ISFJ, except that the INFJ has goals, plans, and ambitions for their future, so they're more focused on themselves. It doesn't mean they can't be cooperative. As a matter of fact, to succeed and get up there in you know places of higher authority, power, money, and so on and so forth, you have to learn to be a little bit cooperative in most cases. And so INFJs usually do exceedingly well on that front. However, because of their level of cooperativeness, they sometimes miss out on opportunities to advance. And so it might take them a little bit longer to advance to where they want to get to. But for the most part, they're generally... I mean, it's fake as hell because it's extroverted feeling, of course, so it's going to be fake. But they are very polite and very respectful. And, of course, very conscientious. Um... So they can seem like normal people. They don't go out of their way to look weird or anything or eye-catching. You know, they, they do their best to blend in with a little bit of a personal flair to how they dress. But they don't they don't try to stand out, you know, and be super eye-catching or anything. They're, they they typically act like normal people. The, the difference being they just they have higher goals and aspirations for themselves. Which leads them to have a little more focus on their personal life rather than the lives of other people. That's all. But still, very you know, they could be very kind and respectful and out and out in the open, in the wild, in public. That's all. Sneak attack. I need a 
dagger that causes some kind of a stun effect or something so I can load up these sneak attacks on something in mid-combat instead of having to always press the sneak button. This guy's supposed to be a challenging rating, but I'm beating him up pretty easy. That's probably from the Shadow Dancer. How to get typed again. So you would go to my Discord, and there is a spot somewhere, Applications, and then you would do a, a new post, and then you would title it, I would like to be typed, and then any extra information, like when you're available, for example, to be typed, etc. And then one of my assistants will respond to you and let you know when the time would be a good time. That's all. Just like this. So yeah, here's all the past applications that have been put in. Some of them anyway, not all of them, but yeah. Easy peasy. So no real ENTP female so far, but you have confirmed to meet an INTJ female. My mother, uh, the young woman I met at the Walmart, and uh, one of my friends named Marina. INTJs. Females. Three. Just the three. Very rare. And they're usually very busy. And what I've noticed in the females uh, is that they... Um, they tend to have a very high opinion of themselves. And maybe for good reason, I don't know. But they don't usually have an issue letting you know that they have a high opinion of themselves. So, there's that as well. And uh, as for ENTP females, I try to imagine, well, if I were an ENTP female, I would have gotten a fair amount of attention in school, and then, of course, into high school. Um, I would have done what, you know, I, I could have done quite a bit to get some extra advantages in life, you know, getting special loans or grants that are for girls only. I would have uh, done well, of course, on the test. I, I still wouldn't have done my homework, but I imagine I could have convinced some nerds to do homework for me. Uh, <laughs> I could have skated my way through a lot of stuff, gotten into college, and then, of course, just went to college just for the fun stuff uh, while being on someone else's dime. And then maybe uh, there's just a lot I could have done um, as an ENTP female. Uh, do you have any experiences with ENFJs? Uh, I did know an ENFJ female. I met her in Oregon. I was visiting family. And uh, I met her there. Uh, most ENFJs, um, they're doing stuff. They're, they, of course, still have that introverted intuition, so they are, they're busy gals. Like, they are 
networking with people all the time. They're they're usually surrounded by people. They're moving from one get together to the next, and, you know, and moving their way up the social ladder on top of uh, you know, whatever they want to do and pursue, you know, pursuing their personal agendas through life. A lot of ENFJs that I have talked to, not met in person, but the ones that I believed were ENFJs, uh, they had this strange, maybe, maybe not necessarily strange, but it was strange to me that they oftentimes wanted to go into law, like criminal law. That was something that I had noticed. Um, you know, uh, some of them worked for the uh, some government agencies that I had spoken with. Um, so law-related things, I'm not 100% sure why. I would have assumed that ENFJs, their primary goal in life was to make it up to these higher-level institutions so that they could find a higher grade of man to marry. And then, you know, that would be their trophy, would be, you know, having this uh, high-powered man so that they could have not just control over him, but control over anyone that would be under him as well. And then, of course, other people uh, would consider you as highly valuable if you were able to find such a high-value man. Um, that would be, you know, that's what I always figured, and I'm sure some of them do do that, but otherwise they seem to go into law for whatever reason. I mean, it, it does involve people, so I, I guess that makes sense. Uh, convincing other people to do what you want, etc. So. So, yeah. There's that. One second. Oh, anyways, my goodness. Are you a hippie? No. <laughs> I am not. Hmm. Do you hate hippies? I don't hate many people. Hate requires effort. I have to really focus in on hating people. I just... I can't be bothered, personally. Anyways. 455. Looking good. Um, thank you once again, Ven, for your $10 donation for today's stream. It, uh, you're a sweetheart. As I regularly say. And last... Absolute last-minute questions. Uh, as for the hippie thing, no, I'm not a hippie, and no, I don't hate hippies. They live the way that they want to. It may not be the most logical way to go about living life, but you know, why does uh, why does everything have to be logical all the time? That's just a me thing. As for Brienne, Brianna. Brianna T. It would be fun to have you in the Discord, I imagine. You've got jokes. You can breathe some life into the Discord. If you're still there, doubt she's even watching. Anyways, I guess that'll be it for today. Remember to go to my Discord if you would have, like to talk or if you have any other questions. And if you want to get typed, of course, it's on here. In the typing section, you might have to press the button there to get it to come down, but yeah, all that jazz. You prefer to, uh, not all the time, not all the time. It's, uh, it's just when people say something that doesn't make sense, then I will question it at the very least. I, uh, I I tell people that I am a master 
of suspension of disbelief. As long as your story is entertaining, I can most of the time ignore plot holes in what it is that you're saying, as long as it's entertaining. Um, as, or, you know, as long as you're not trying to lie to me. And of course, that will get you called out as well. But if you're just trying to tell me some story for entertainment purposes, I'll, I'll just go along with it. You know, it's perfectly fine. It doesn't necessarily need to be logical as long as it made me laugh or giggle or something. So that's usually okay. But uh, mm, preference, yes. Things need to follow a A to B, B to C kind of pattern in the logic. Otherwise, I'm going to be like, well, you missed a whole step here. <laughs> so, you know, you have to explain it to me. Breeze out today. We'll fix that later. Anyways, uh, if you have any more questions, of course, just at me on my Discord. And if you'd like to be typed, that's also where you do it. And that'll be it for today's live stream. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for your donation, Ven. And uh, thank you all for watching, if I hadn't said that already. Have a good day.